um, to Eastern Visaya State University po, uh, the Zoom rooms is Good afternoon. Uh, our IT Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to remind you all to please rename our profile, our profile name following the, this format, name of your institution, name of the college where you belong, space, then your name. Again, we would like to remind everyone, our participants are already here in the room, that we would like to request that we change our profile name on the screen following this format the name of our institution first, then the name of the college where you belong, space, then you write your name. Thank you very much. Okay, so once again, we remind everyone to please change the or rename your profile name for the screen following this format, the name of your institution, the name of your college where you belong, space your name. For the meantime, while we are waiting for others to join us here, we would like to read to you our rules as we conduct our webinar series for this afternoon. Again, as we do this via Zoom, we remind everyone to respectfully observe the following video conference etiquettes. First, or number one, is to test device compatibility to ensure that you do not experience or cause inconvenience while participating in the session. Do not navigate on the screen share feature in order not to grab the screen of the resource person and those recognized to speak. Be on time so we can start and end our session on time. No entry approval during the session proper to ensure that our resource person or speaker is not distracted or disturbed in any manner. Log out after the end of the session. This is very important. We have to mute audio and video for us not to interrupt or disturb our resource person and cause inconvenience in the conduct of our webinar series this afternoon. Rename profile for easier recognition. For those who have not changed their profile name on screen, you can follow these instructions. After launching the Zoom meeting,
click on the participants icon at the bottom of the window. In the participants list on the right side of the Zoom window, hover over your name and click on the rename button. Then type in the display name following the format, name of your institution, college where you belong, space your name. Click OK afterwards. Proper attire is highly encouraged. Avoid distractions as this webinar session requires undivided attention. Also, this is very important. Speak only if recognized. Again, only if recognized. These are, or those are the reminders for all of us. And we hope that we will respectfully observe for us to conduct our afternoon session smoothly as also we give more time for our speakers and later on during our forum. Thank you very much. Forty-four. Ani mo committee ko ang in policy. Ah, monitoring kam, evaluation kam. Ay o himang kamu di monitor ko. Will take some time. Testing our ability. 
So once again, good afternoon to everyone. We are live and tuning in to Eastern Messiah's Higher Education Institutions, Flexible yeah. Learning Management System Consortium. And this is our training workshop on course module production for flexible in higher education institutions. For this afternoon's webinar series, our host institution is Eastern Visaya State University, represented by its focal person, Dr. Dennis Sidipaz. And for other participants who cannot join us here via Zoom, please note that we are also live on YouTube and Facebook. Just type, just type EVHESFLMSC. At this very moment, we also would like to acknowledge our representative from the Commission of Higher Education, both national and local, our key officials from the different state universities and colleges in the region, our resource person who will be formally introduced in a while, Focal persons from the different universities and all present here today via Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube Live. Again, to one and all, good afternoon. As we conduct our webinar series via Zoom, we remind everyone to respectfully observe the following video conference etiquettes. Test device compatibility to ensure that you do not experience or cause inconvenience while participating in this session. Do not navigate on the screen, share feature, 
in order not to grab the screen of the resource person and those recognized to speak. Be on time so we can start and end our session on time. No entry approval during the session proper to ensure that our resource speaker is not distracted or disturbed in any manner. Log out after the end of the session. And this is also very important. We have to mute audio and video for us not to interrupt or disturb our resource person and cause inconvenience in the conduct of our webinar sessions. Rename profile for easier recognition. For those who do not change their profile name on screen, you can follow these instructions. After launching the Zoom meeting, click on the participants icon at the bottom of the window. In the participants list on the right side of the Zoom window, hover over your name and click on the rename button. Then type in the display name, following the format, name of your institution, college where you belong, space your name. Then click OK. Proper attire is highly encouraged. Avoid distractions as this webinar session requires undivided attention. Also, speak only if recognized. Again, only if recognized. As we face the new normal brought about by this pandemic, we cannot simply sit and do nothing. We need to rise above the challenge of time and work together to ensure inclusivity and connectivity for the welfare of our learners and the educational community. And with that, let us pause for a moment and feel the presence of our Heavenly Father as Dr. Annalyn Spanio lead us into prayer. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift of life, the gift of work, and the gift of each other, as we hold on together to fight this global pandemic. We truly thank you for your infinite blessings, despite our failures and shortcomings. As we are now gathered here in this training workshop on course modules production for flexible learning and HEIs, we give you our hearts, our minds, and our lives. We seek for your words of life into our beings, so that after this activity, we may spread what we learned in the spirit of your love and generosity. Deepen our comprehension, broaden our thinking, and transform our understanding in today's webinar as we prepare ourselves in traversing the new normal with you as our greatest teacher, wise counselor, and ever faithful companion. Bless our resource speaker so that he will be able to impart effectively his God-given knowledge to all of us. And may he continue to bring his expertise and share his talents to people who need him. Bless the CHED officials, the organizers, the committees, the SUC 8 presidents, and the entire Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institutions Flexible Learning Management System Consortium, that we may succeed as one academic community in this collective undertaking for your greater glory and honor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Ma'am Annalyn, Board Secretary, Eastern Visaya State University. At this juncture, to formally introduce our expert resource person for this afternoon session, please welcome the president of Eastern Visaya State University, and at the same time, the current chair of the Philippines Association of State Universities and Colleges, Region 8, Dr. Dominador Aguirre Jr. Good afternoon, everyone. Our renowned speaker this afternoon, Dr. Jesse Barot is an author, editor, trainer, researcher, and teacher by profession. 
He holds a PhD in Applied Linguistics and a Master's in Teaching English. He is currently full professor three, the highest university rank, and the Dean of the College of Education, Arts and Sciences at the National University, and an author and resident trainer for CNE Publishing. Prior to becoming the Dean, he used to be the head of the Research Center of National University, Editor-in-Chief of Rex Publishing and a professor at some of the top universities in the Philippines. Recently, he has been cited as one of the top scholars, scientists in the Philippines, project acumen funded by the European Commission, and one of the most productive researchers in the field of education and language and linguistics in the Philippines. He also has three international awards, namely Award for International Participation at TESOL by the prestigious TESOL International Association in Washington in the United States of America, Research Fellowship Award by the Southeast Asian Ministry of Education, Regional English Language Center in Singapore, and semi-finalist of the prestigious National Academy of Education Spencer Postdoctoral Fellowship Award 2019, the USA. Dr. Barot has been invited as a language and research consultant for various international and national projects, such as the National Foreign Language Center at the University of Maryland in the US, Japan International Cooperation Agency, the United States Agency for International Development, Ministry of Education, Science, Sports, and Culture of Japan, the Knowledge the Channel Knowledge. Incorporated, and BDO Foundation. He has also conducted over 100 workshops and seminars all over the Philippines and abroad on writing for scholarly journals, business communication, teaching, and learning oral presentation, research, and professional writing, and has delivered plenary talks in many local and international conferences. He served as judge in various research competitions as well. As a writer and researcher, Dr. Barot has already published 18 textbooks that cover business correspondence, grammar, academic reading and writing, technical writing and speech communication and practical research. He has also authored more than 40 scholarly work and research articles, many of which were published in top journals in education and applied linguistics. He has also presented papers in prestigious international conferences in the United States, Singapore, Japan, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Macau, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Cambodia. He also served as a reviewer for over 30 Scopus and ISI journals and served as editor-in-chief and editorial board advisory of various academic journals. Some of Dr. Barot's latest textbooks include Practical Research 1 and 2, Academic Reading and Writing for Senior High School, English for Academic and Professional Purposes, and purposive communication in the 21st century. And so my dear colleagues, let's all welcome our renowned resource speaker this afternoon, Dr. Jesse Barot. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, for that wonderful introduction. Maraming salamat po. Medyo mahaba-haba yung binasa niyo, sir, ano? <laughs> anyway, um, let me share the. Sa tech po, paki assist. Can, can you hear me? Naririnig po ako? Yes, sir. You are loud and clear. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, should I share na the PowerPoint that I have? Or simultaneous naman yung PowerPoint sa ako, no? <clears throat> yes, po, let, sir. Sige, let me ano. Oops, 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 there. Ay, hindi pala. Sige, later na lang. <clears throat> anyway, so good afternoon to all of you. Hindi ko alam kung ilan ang uh, participants dito sa 
uh, uh, training na to. And I'm, I'm really happy to see familiar faces. No? I did some trainings then sa ibang universities dyan sa Tate, like sa EVSU. I have so many friends there in Leyte. Uh, uh, tsaka yung mga higher education dyan. So, so, I'm really excited to do this lecture on uh, module writing. Um, and thanks pala for the invitation and uh, thanks then for the for, for those who uh, took time to attend this uh, webinar. So as you may see, uh, by the way, I, I, I have two talks here. The first one is on uh, uh, related to OBE. And then the second one is very, very specific to uh, materials uh, development. Um, and we all know that uh, COVID pandemic has uh, really challenged the education sector. No? So in all aspects of, uh, of, of uh, education, uh, so operations, logistics, and of course, the delivery of uh, instruction. Now the question is, did we succeed or did we fail? So it's too early to say. That's why we are doing this kind of uh, training. Um, and uh, of course, that is to prepare ourselves for the new normal. Okay. So I think I, 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 I know that you are aware already of the flexible learning that uh, Chad, I think, is planning to have. Ito yung dun sa, parang nagkaroon tayo ng public consultation on that one, no? But just to give you an overview of that one, because I've read the, <coughs> I've, I've read the material or the, the draft version of that uh, article. And uh, it only uh, gives us a lot of... Uh, options no for instructional delivery meron diyang online of course online is uh, divided into two we have the synchronous ito yung real time ito yung paghalimbawa ng nag-message kami sagot agad yan so nakikita agad ng mga nag-uusap and then we have asynchronous naman uh, hindi naman to real time of course uh, but both is still internet-based. Akala kasi ng iba kapag online asynchronous, hindi na internet-based and yun yung dinownload. No? Uh, online asynchronous, you are still using uh, uh, internet, pero hindi lang uh, real-time yung interaction. No? So yung sinasabi ko kanina na uh, yung pag-dinownload na yung materials from the internet, tapos yung studyante sinasagutan yung materials no? hindi gumagamit ng internet, ang tawag, of course, doon ay offline na. Okay? And then we have uh, we have the conventional print. Ito yung mga modules na na pwedeng ipadala na lang halimbawa ng school or kuli ng studyante sa school, yung mga printed modules. Tapos yun naman yung uh, sasagutan nila. Okay? Yung ibang school, they give uh, gadgets no, to the students so that yung mga internet connect tapos naka-save na lahat doon ng materials no para hindi sila affected nung uh, poor internet uh, connectivity and then itong gagamitin naman ng chat there is the broadcast type it can either be done through uh, TV or radio when it comes to level naman yung document na ni-release ng chat they distinguish yung high level technology Merong mid-level technology, and then there's this uh, low-level technology. No? And of course, it interacts with the uh, strength of uh, internet connectivity also. And of course, when we say flexible learning, <clears throat> it should be flexible in three ways. Now, the first one is it should be flexible when it comes to time. Because I they can choose whatever time they want to do the activities. No? Kasi hindi natin alam kung ano yung kanilang realities dun sa kanilang uh, bahay. And then there's this flexi flexibility when it comes to uh, context. So ito yung portability. So kung kahit nasaan ka, uh, you'll be able to, to access your uh, 
and use uh, you know, utilize the the materials for learning and then the third one is flexibility on tool <coughs> yung sa flexibility naman ng tool uh, it's related to technology so dapat yung ibibigay nating technology ay um hindi masyadong complicated kasi nagiging problem is when you use very complicated technology talagang becomes a big problem for not only for the students but also for the for the teachers uh? so we have to make sure that the technology that you, you we choose is uh, inclusive meaning it doesn't really it doesn't really discriminate people no yung may mahinang internet yung mga walang pera masyado for data yung hindi masyadong skilled sa technology so dapat inclusive ang pipili in a technology that's why because i do a lot of research also on uh, the use of social media for uh, as a learning environment at talagang very very powerful yung uh, social media so if you have this learning management system may platform na kayong ginagamit like sa amin we use uh, MS Teams, um, you can supplement it with uh, other other um, technologies, no? like the social media. Uh, kasi mas accessible ang mga estudyante, eh, sa, lalo na sa Facebook Messenger. Nako, they're very, very, very accessible uh, dyan sa Messenger. And then, one part of the tool is the <clears throat> course materials. Yan, dyan napapasok yun. So, dapat yung course materials then is very inclusive. No? So, uh, at ano yan, it should promote uh, self-directed learning. Ibig sabihin, yung studyante, when they use the course materials, um, kailangan, walang kailangan masyadong paliwanagan. Yung pag ginamit niya yung course materials, wala masyadong malabo or walang masyadong question dun sa estudyante. So, kaya kailangan yung course materials should be self-contained. But, but I will go into details na lang when we go to the second session. And of course, I will give Dinaman some tips um, uh, during this uh, first session uh, today. <clears throat> okay, so I think, um, let me start now with my first session. Let me show you the uh, PowerPoint. <clears throat> okay, there. I hope you can see it. Uh, I hope you can see it clearly. Okay, so I, I'll be talking about student-centered outcome uh, outcomes-based model because one of the thrusts of the yung flexible learning guidelines na inirelease ng CHED is um, kailangan it has to complement OBE. So we, we have to start from OBE first. Ano? Tapos how can we promote yung student-centeredness when we prepare our instructional material? So from general tayo, Pa-zoom tayo ng pa-zoom the specifics ng uh, module writing. So for this session, <coughs> I'll be talking about uh, the principles of uh, OBE and I'm sure I'm, you're, you're, you're familiar with it. Mag Magre-review lang tayo ng konti no? sa OBE. And then uh, the appropriateness of assessment techniques. Nako, based on my experience as a trainer, and as an evaluator of uh, some textbooks, uh, and of course as administrator, talagang medyo dito nagkakaroon ng problema sa assessment. So we will talk about a lot of things on assessment uh, techniques and their appropriateness when we prepare instructional materials. <clears throat> and then, of course, we will talk about 21st century learning kasi nasa Education 4.0 tayo, actually, papunta na tayo sa Education 5.0. No? Uh, medyo nasa bungad na tayo. So, kailangan, we have to adjust our ways of teaching <clears throat> and we have to understand the ways of learning of our 21st century uh, students. Okay, so let's start with, uh, with a review on OBE. Okay, let me start with it. This is in the form of ano na lang. Let's try to make it like a quiz B. A multiple choice. You have four options. Okay. So, and then you try to answer. <clears throat> ah, too small daw yung ano. Let me try to uh, adjust. Uh, okay. Sir, can I assist you, sir? Um, ito, okay na po ba? Okay na yan po. Okay, okay na yan. Ayan. Tinilt ko na lang itong ano. Lang. 
wait for a while. <coughs> yan. Okay. So, yan. Siguro, hopefully, malaki-laki na itong ano, PowerPoint. <coughs> okay. So, first question. Which of the following is a feature of OBE? So, A, observes alignment of learning outcomes and TL activities. TL means teaching and learning activities. B, sorry, um, organizes teaching, learning, and assessment to achieve learning outcomes. C, uh, uses learning outcomes as a core uh, element. Or D, all of the above. What do you think is the answer? <clears throat> okay. Obviously, the answer here is you, you try to check your own answer kasi ang passing score natin dito, ano, apat nasa 75%, no? Uh, mas maganda kung mapaperfect natin, okay? Uh, the answer for this item is D, all of the above, no? It observes alignment of learning outcomes and teaching and learning activities. Okay, ibig sabihin... Diba, we put learning outcomes in our syllabus. So, bawat isa doon, kailangan may corresponding, no? may corresponding uh, activities. Okay? So, kasi the heart of OBE are the learning outcomes. So, kailangan alay na alay ng dalawa. Organizes teaching, learning, and assessment to achieve learning outcomes. Definitely, this is what we call constructive alignment. No? So even the assessment dapat nagma-match. Pag sinabi mo dun sa outcome mo na uh, to be able to write an argumentative essay, <clears throat> kailangan may task ka talaga on uh, writing essay. Pag sinilagay mo dun to effectively deliver uh, deliver a proposal, o hindi dapat you have a task no corresponding to that particular uh, outcome. So the, the outcomes itself, is very, very crucial. So, kaya dapat tama yung pagkakakraft niya. Um, and then, uses learning outcomes as a core element. Of course, as I've said a while back, no? kailangan ang learning outcome ang puso at pa-backward design. Diba? Nalagay mo na learning outcome, saka ka, mag, saka ka gagawa ng lahat ng mga teaching and learning activities at saka assessment activities. Okay, let's go to the next item. <clears throat> Which of the following OBE principles requires teachers to give reinforcement activities to learners? A, clarity of focus, B, designing down, C, high expectations, or D, expanded opportunities. Of course, pag sinabing clarity of focus, what we mean by that is dapat malinaw yung inyong pagkakasulat ng learning outcomes. No? It has to be very, very clear. No? Meaning, at a glance, meaning the one time that I read your learning outcomes, I should be able to understand it immediately. So that's what we mean by clarity of focus. No? Tapos malinaw kung ano yung tinatarget talaga. Be designing down, big sabihin yan, we have institutional learning outcomes, we have program learning outcomes, and then we have course learning outcomes. And then yung pinaka bottom, uh, bottom part is the uh, uh, topic learning outcomes, yun yung lesson, lesson level. So designing down, dapat magkaka-align lahat nung, uh, nung uh, elements na yon. See high expectations. Meaning, dapat yung mga activities should be challenging enough and should have a semblance of of uh, real life uh, real life activities, no? And then dinaman expanded opportunities. We give them additional tasks. Therefore, the answer to this question is D. Expanded opportunities. Uh, what do we all we what 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 we what do we mean by this one? Also, uh, pag sinabing expanded opportunities. Um, the student should not be confined only within the four corners of the classroom. So you have to give lots of activities, lots of tasks no, to your students, which they can do outside the four corners or beyond the four corners of their uh, classroom, which is very, very appropriate now na online ang delivery ng ating uh, instructions. Three, 
Which of the following learning outcomes is at the curriculum level? Yung ano yung ano yung nire-release ng CHED na curriculum. Institutional, B program, C course or D topic? Of course the answer here is program learning outcomes, no? Makikita natin 'yan sa ano, doon sa uh, uh, CMO na nirelease ng uh, CHED no sa kada kada program. So when we talk about curriculum level, ayan 'yan, program learning outcomes 'yan. When we talk about institutional learning outcome naman, um, it means that you are talking about graduate attributes. So by now, all of the universities should uh, really uh, have clearly stipulated all the graduate attributes for their respective uh, universities and colleges. No? Mag-iiba-iba yan kasi bawat university, bawat college, may kanya-kanyang thrust, may kanya-kanyang uh, personality. Although meron namang mga core graduate attributes which I will be sharing uh, with you later. Para if, in case it's not incorporated into your into your uh, graduate attributes, you can add them to your uh, to your list. Uh, course learning outcomes. This is at the syllabus level level. <clears throat> no, ayan yung kauna unah kauna nating nakikita. And then topic learning outcome that is on lesson level. So the answer for three is B. Program learning outcomes. Okay. Ito yung sa chat eh. I may show to you. Itong nasa right side of the screen, <coughs> yan yung nirelease ng CHED. Parehas lang naman yan, no? Kaya lang yung term, of course, nung sa CHED ay institutional outcomes, uh, program outcomes, course outcomes, no? Um, I, I advise that you follow these terms. Kaya lang may ma-encounter ma kayo na iba pang terms, no? Pero parehas lang yan. Yung iba tawag dyan ay institutional learning outcome or pre program learning outcome or course uh, learning outcomes. Uh, but both are the same. No? Kaya lang, internationally, mas ginagamit itong nasa kaliwa. Uh, itong nandito sa maroon na, na graph. No? Uh, yung dito sa kabila, Filipinized, Filipinized uh, terms naman yan. But again, they are just similar. Next. Um, which of the following is the best source of program learning outcomes? A, CHED policies and standards. B, industry advisory group. C, both A and B. Or D, neither A nor B. Of course, the answer here is C, both A and B. And sabi ko kanina, you can get it from CHED policies and standards. But you should not really settle for that one because sometimes yung nandun sa program learning outcomes na nandun sa CHED, uh, may mga ilang items na nanmi-miss from the perspective of the industry. So that's why it's very, very important that uh, part of the curriculum review process of a particular university is the industry advisory group. So, yung industry advisory group composed of people, um, maganda yan per program eh. So people from that particular, halimbawa, ABCOM. Diba? So you get people from the broadcast, from radio, from the academy also, bring them together, and then talk about ano ba yung kailangan na mga learning outcomes na ma-achieve ng mga estudyante once they graduate from uh, college. So very, very crucial yung B because it supplements no the, the academic perspective nung sa CHED policies and standards. Uh, although nandun din naman ang perspective ng industry, pero when you have industry advisory group, mas lalo pa nating ano, napupulido yung list of uh, learning outcomes. Okay, so for the answer there is C. <clears throat> Next, uh, what graduate attribute does adaptability Ball or your ability to adjust, uh, ability to adjust, ability to adjust uh, by the students that we produce. A, academic excellence, B, citizenship, 
C leadership and teamwork or D life and career skills. The answer here is D life and career skills. Ito yung mga ano self management uh, skills. Okay, so that. Next, which graduate attribute refers to learners' problem-solving skills? Uh, many people are confused here. Eh? Dito sa distinction nitong tatlong to. A, creativity. B, critical thinking. C, innovation. Uh, D, all of the above. The answer here is because it's problem-solving skills, it's critical thinking okay uh why because you know creativity means you produce something almost out of nothing that's that's what we mean by creativity innovation um information are available tapos sometimes you fuse the two concepts and then you come up with a new idea that's innovation no so at least may mga basis ka na dyan when you call uh, when, when you when you uh when you focus on innovation. And then, of course, if it's critical thinking, um, it, talagang it really directs, directly relates to problem-solving uh, skills. Next, um, which graduate attribute is not considered as a generic skill? Not considered as a generic skill. A, ICT mastery, B, effective communication, C, intercultural competence, or D, compassion. The answer here is definitely it's not ICT mastery. Definitely it's not effective communication. So the answer here is D, compassion. Why? Because A, B, and C are all skills. But D, it's not a skill. No, It's an affective uh, factor. So the answer here is D. Okay. So, ito yung uh, sinasabi ko na I, I try to read the graduate attributes of some of the top universities abroad and of course also here in the Philippines. And these are the nine core graduate attributes that I have noticed. Yung talagang halos present tong lahat ng to dun sa mga top universities na yon. Of course, number one, academic excellence. Hindi pwede mo wala yun. <coughs> dapat mag-excel ka dun sa mga uh, sa mga uh, subjects that you you are uh, taking and then you have leadership and teamwork so the 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 teacher and the school and the program should uh, provide opportunities for students to practice leadership skills and teamwork kaya yung halimbawa yung maliliit ng bagay na ginagawa natin sa classroom, very, very crucial yun dito sa leadership and teamwork. Hindi uubra na yung kung sino yung leader ngayon, palaging siya na lang ang leader. So even those who are not really that very, very good no, in the academic side should also be given an opportunity to take a lead. At yun din naman yung mga malimit na nagiging leader, pag sila'y naging member, should be given an opportunity to be a member para ma-practice ma din naman nila yung, yung, uh, yung perspective ng isang member. It further enhances their skills, no, their, their teamwork skills, if that's the case. Of course, ICT mastery, ito hindi masyadong problema sa ating mga digital natives. No? Kasi minsan mas magagaling pa sila sa teacher pagdating sa technology. And then, of course, you have the critical thinking, effective communication, I think. Intercultural competence, by the way, is... Um, kasi this is a global society now. No? Hindi pwedeng yung studyante ay kinukulong lang natin na makipag-interact doon sa... Uh, doon lang sa, sa, sa maliit na context nila. Halimbawa, kung sa late, puro taga late lang yung nakaka-interact or puro taga Philippines lang nakaka-interact, we have to give them opportunities also to interact with people from other culture. Because uh, through that, they would be able to practice or they would be able to showcase their uh, identity as a Filipino 
uh, but still promoting effective communication with people from other cultures. Citizenship is yung social participation of our students. Kaya uh, I'm pretty sure you're aware of the concept of service learning. Um, I've learned this from uh, Nanyang. Uh, when, when I visited Nanyang, Univer Nanyang Technological University, they systematically implemented the concept of service learning, and that is to allow the students to uh, contribute and participate in uh, social activities. Life and career skills, yan yung mga flexibility. Anyway, I'll be showing to you later the details of that. Next, what type of constructive, I mentioned a while back, constructive alignment. No? What type of constructive alignment is shown in a given table? Yan. Our options, by the way, wait, excuse me. Um, our options, macro-constructive, micro-constructive, both A and B, and neither A nor B. Yan. That's the table. So what do you think is this? Is it macro-constructive or micro, both, or neither of the two? The answer is, it is a macro-constructive alignment. Macro, kasi malaki. No? Um, and when we see constructive alignment, yan yung binanggit ko kanina na yung learning outcome, yung uh, teaching learning activities at saka assessment, no? ay magkaka-align. In this case, this is institutional level. So this is a macro-constructive alignment. Ano yung micro, you might be asking? Micro-constructive alignment is yung inilagay mo dun sa lesson. This is lesson level. No? Yung, yung, ito yung ilalagay nyo dun sa course materials nyo. Kailangan very, very uh, uh, critical yung pag-integrate ng micro-constructive alignment. Yung lahat ng learning outcomes or topic learning outcomes na inilagay nyo dun sa lesson or sa module, kailangan may corresponding assessment and teaching and learning activities. Yun yung micro. So for this one, it is macro-constructive alignment. Next, which of the following describes a learning outcome? <coughs> what learners can do, what learners must do, both A and B, neither A nor B. The answer here is it's both A and B. Of course, what learners can do, yun yung inilalagay nyo sa uh, learning outcomes. And then what learners must do naman, kailangan gawin nila yung inilagay nyo doon sa learning outcomes. So the answer for this one is C. Next, which of the following is a way to classify learning outcomes? Discipline, specific, generic skills and attitude. Knowledge, ito yung KSA, knowledge, skills, attitude. C, cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. And then D, all of the above. The answer to this one is all of the above. Now, in your case, depende na lang kung alin dyan ang inyong pipiliin. Um, but the more popular ones are the B and C, kasi yung B and C, uh, magkaparehas lang siya. Nag-iba lang sila ng uh, term. Let me show you samples of this one. Yan. Pag-discipline specific, yung inyong learning outcome, specific to that subject or specific to that course. O halimbawa, use variety of statistical tools and procedures to process and manage numerical data. Yeah, specific yan sa subject, no? Hindi naman yan ginagamit sa lahat ng mga courses. Eh. So malamang ito, ano, uh, quantitative uh, research or advanced statistics no? or basta related sa statistics. Generic naman, it can be applied across all subjects. For example, ICT. Yung paggamit ng ICT, yan, pwede naman yung i-integrate sa lahat. So that's generic skills. And then of course, the attitudes and values that's related to... Um, um, affected factors. And then you will see there the samples of uh, knowledge skills and attitudes and then cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. Hindi kailangan pare-parehas ng bilang itong mga to, Kasi yung iba, 
ang ginagawa, tatlo sa knowledge, tatlo sa skills, tatlo sa attitude. Hindi ganon. It depends on the subject. May mga subject na heavy on attitude. May mga subject na heavy on skills. May mga subject na heavy on knowledge. No? Um, so, um, hindi kailangan pare-parehas ang bilang niyan. No? Basta ang importante, you are able to integrate the essential learning outcomes <coughs> related to that particular subject. <coughs> Next. Which of the following is not an essential component of a learning outcome? A. Action verb. B. Adjective. C. Object of the verb. Or D, performer. <clears throat> the answer here is B. No? Yung A, hindi pwede mawala. Siyempre. Yung C, hindi rin siya pwede mawala. No? Kasi incomplete ang ano nyo, thoughts nyo sa learning outcomes. And definitely, the performer, hindi pwede mawala. And that's the students. No? Let me show you some examples here. Um, pag institutional learning outcome, ABC University graduates will be able to provide solutions to challenges in respective areas of specialization. So the performer, yung mga graduates, yung verb, provide solutions. And then object of the verb, ano yun, ano yung po-provide nila, di yung sa ano, uh, solutions dun sa challenges, no? in respective areas of specializations. And that's the same thing for PLO. You have the graduates there as a performer. You have the produce <coughs> uh, as the verb, and then teaching innovations as object of the verb. No? So these three are very, very crucial. But but it doesn't mean naman that you have to exclude adjectives. Sometimes you also in, uh, include adjectives, but it's not really that a fundamental part of the uh, learning outcome. Yung tatlo yung talagang essential components of uh, a learning outcome. Next, which of the following levels of learning does critiquing fall? Yan, nagpapakritik tayo sa ating mga estudyante. Diba? So A, is it creating? B, is it evaluating? C, analyzing? Or D, applying? <coughs> the answer here is critiquing it. So you will assess whether it's good or not, not good, good or bad, correct or incorrect. So the answer is B, evaluating. Um, uh, analyzing is, ano, it's a different thing. Baka may question ako dito, later na lang. Next, which of the following levels of learning do comparing and contrasting fall? A, creating, B, evaluating, C, analyzing, or D, applying? <laughs> the answer here is C, analyzing. Why? Because analyzing is you try to break down, no? You try to break down information. And definitely, when you compare and when you contrast, you break down the information. No, alimba dito magkakatulad. Alimba dito yung magkakaiba. And uh, frequently, diba, typically, we prepare a diagram for that one. Specifically, the Venn diagram just to break down or tease out the information. So, basta it involves uh, involves uh, teasing out of information, breaking down of information, then that would fall under analyzing. And um, ito po ha, when you create your instructional materials, be very, very careful also with the words that we use when it comes to comparing and contrasting. Kasi napakalimit kong ma-encounter uh, <clears throat> ma the teacher, every time I ob observe classes, the teacher would say, compare, let's say, compare uh, the U.S. economy and the Philippine economy. Yun ang tanong, no? yun yung task na gagawin ng uh, studyante na binato ng teacher. Tapos si teacher, ang ine-expect niyang sagot ay yung similarities and differences. 
Eh, more of ano pa nga, more of differences. But your question is to compare. Okay? When we say compare, what we want to elicit from our students are the similarities. No? Pag ang ating verb na ginamit dun is to contrast. Therefore, our focus there are the differences. So we have to be very careful with the verbs that we are using when we uh, ask our students to do some activities on comparing and contrasting. If you want your if you want your task to be <clears throat> inclusive, then you can probably use the word distinguish. Huh? Distinguish Philippine economy from the U.S. economy. So if that's your question, then you are focusing on both the similarities and differences of the two uh, economies. Um, ito, nagbigay din ako ng ilang samples. But again, ha, ito naman, downloadable yan sa ano eh. Downloadable yan sa internet. A very comprehensive. This can be downloaded from the internet. Um, kaya lang, itong mga words na ginamit minsan dyan, halimbawa, um, classify. Yung classify, pwede siyang mapunta sa understanding, pwede rin naman siyang mapunta dun sa applying. Depende dun sa tasks na binigay nyo sa, sa studyante. So, at the end of the day, of course, aside from the verbs that you use in the tasks and activities that you will ask your students to do, para malaman yung category niya or level of learning, you have to understand also the nature of the activity itself. Okay? But, of course, this one would serve as a guide in preliminary classifying the activities. And, um, this is very important also. It is very important also that when you write your, your uh, learning outcomes, since we are targeting college students, kailangan nandun ang karamihan, preferably mga 70%, no? at least 70% of your learning outcomes should be targeting higher order thinking skills. Yung iba kasi, I've ever... I've seen a lot of books, I've seen a lot of instructional materials, I've seen a lot of lesson plans. College ang tinuturuan. Pero sang katutak yung lower order thinking skills. Hindi hindi ganoon. When we are the higher the le the instructional level is, the more frequent that we have to use uh higher order thinking skills, no? Yung pag lower level dun yan sa mga elementary, no? Although meron counting higher order thinking skills din doon. So as you go up to the ladder of instructional level, then uh, the complexity of your uh, action verbs should also follow suit. Okay? Next. Which of the following should be observed when writing... Learning outcomes. A, check if there are overlapping LOs or learning outcomes. B, make learning outcomes measurable using various assessment methods. C, write clearly and concisely. And D, all of the above. The answer here is all of the above. Okay? So, kailangan walang mga overlapping. Let me show you some examples here. Example. Write clearly and concisely. Sabi. Tapos, ito yung nilagay na LO. Present ideas in a persuasive manner and in the manner that language registers are appropriate using correct tone, facial expressions, and gestures in any context that such actions will be used. That's very long. It's a very, very long. Uh, so, what dapat kasi the principle here is at a glance. No? Isang tingin, naintindihan. The more frequent you read it, halimbawa, I, bago ko siya naintindihan, I've read the learning outcome five times. Ibig sabihin, the level of, the level of, um, the level of vagueness of that statement is level five. Dapat nasa level one lang. No? Unang tingin na intindihan agad. Okay? So, ito pwede namang simplihan. You can just say present 
ideas persuasively using appropriate language registers, correct tone, facial expressions, and gestures in various contexts. So that's a simpler way of delivering that one. Yung overlapping naman, halimbawa si LO6 or Course Learning Outcome 6 and 7, uh, yung red yung nag-overlap using audiovisual materials and or web-based presentations. Tapos meron ka rin using appropriate communication aids. Parehas lang yun. No? So, <clears throat> actually, these two can be ano na lang, can be um, consolidated as one learning outcome. So you double check your learning outcomes if they are overlapping uh, LOs. Okay? Last item. <clears throat> Which of the following should be avoided when writing learning outcomes? A, you cover all the 21st century skills. B, make learning outcomes measurable. C, sequence logically. And then D, write from the perspective of teachers. Should be avoided. Which one? The answer here is D. You should avoid the writing of the LOs from the perspective of the teacher. Ba? Um, sample. Yan, an example of that. Let students incorporate. <clears throat> That's from the perspective of the teacher. Unless you are doing, you are doing, um, uh, tawag uh, teacher's guide, no? Tapos nag explain ka dun ng task. Yun, talagang from the perspective of the teacher. But when you are writing the learning outcomes, it has to be from the perspective of the uh, students. No? So, like incorporate photograph into a print ad campaign. Sequence logically. Uh, there are different ways on how you can sequence it. Pwede yung by graduate attributes, yung pinakita kong siyam kanina. So, kada graduate attribute, may corresponding kayong <clears throat> learning outcomes. Pedring by domain. No? Yung domain is yung example is yung knowledge, uh, skills, uh, yung three categories that I presented. Knowledge, skills, and then um, attitude. Tapos yung sa cognitive, psychomotor, and then affective. Uh, yun. So, pili na lang kayo kung which one is appropriate uh, for your course. And then cover the essential 21st century skills. I'll be discussing uh, in details. No? the 21st uh, century skills. Okay? So, before we proceed to the 21st century learning, I think we can probably uh, have uh, like question and answer first, if there are some questions. Para when we proceed to the next one, uh, medyo klarado na yung lahat ng concepts. Or should I proceed to the next few items, Mr. Moderator? Yeah, sir, uh, for now, we have the time for the presentation of your topic. Uh, during mm -hmm. the forum, questions will be entertained. Okay, so I'll just continue na lang. Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's proceed now to 21st century learning. Okay, um, I'm sure you're familiar with that. In Ito, this is not really new, no? Um, however, although it's not new, hindi lahat na susunod yung 21st, uh, the concept of 21st uh, century learning. And this is very, again, as I've said a while back, this is very, very crucial because we need to adjust, no? We need to adjust to the context of our students. Though it may be true that technology cannot be, repl cannot replace teachers, no? But if us teachers will not adapt, to the to 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 this kind of uh, education, which is education 4.0, we teachers will be somehow obsolete, be obsolete, no? So kaya nga ito kitang kita itong nangyari sa ano eh, itong sa COVID pandemic. Akala natin ready ready na tayo sa online kasi may mga may mga initiatives na ang mga bawat university to do blended learning. Pero nung nandyan na yung problema, ayan nangapa lahat no pagdating sa sa online learning and this is not just about technology no minsan yung teacher mismo hindi naka-default 
sa blended learning. So, attitude part ito. Hindi talaga niya fully accepted yung yung uh, blended learning. Minsan naman, yung studyante, hindi sanay because hindi nga na-expose. So, sasabihin ng studyante, oh, hindi nagtuturo si teacher, blah, blah, blah. Kami na lang lahat ang gumagawa kasi hindi rin nga sila nasanay. So, that's why the concept of 21st century learning is really adapting or or bridging yung education, no? bridging education and technology. And we have to to make our students and teachers comfortable, no? comfortable in using uh, these emerging technologies. Now, what are the basic principles of uh, what is 21st century learning first? No? Um, as I've said a while back, no, this is, uh, of course, uh, a response to the proliferation of uh, technology and globalization. Globalization, there is this global society already. Okay, so parang one big community na yung uh, buong mundo. And then, uh, 21st century learning also focuses on the ability of learning learners to process information through the use of available resources. And this is not just uh, on printed materials, napakarami, multimodal sources. We have videos, we have uh, non-linear sources of uh, mga non-linear uh, information yung sa internet. And then you have the print. So, and dami-dami. Hindi, hindi nahihirapan ng studyante makadetermine ng fake news at hindi fake news. No? So, kailangan ito, very, very important na itinuturo natin sa estudyante yung uh, information uh, literacy. And then it focuses on skills that contemporary learners must possess to survive today's highly globalized economy. So we cannot do away, again, we cannot do away with uh, technology. Okay, kaya dun sa ating course materials, kailangan yan ay naka-adjust din sa... Uh, Flexible environment, meaning kaya siya sa print, kaya din siya doon sa uh, online environment. Now, there are six principles, and this is based on uh, P21 framework. Now, if you're familiar with, uh, that's the most popular, uh, most popular 21st century learning uh, framework, the P21 Framework. Number one, mastery of core subjects. Yung mga tinuturo natin, yung academic excellence, no? In a particular subject, yan. Crucial yan. <clears throat> and then the 21st century themes. Uh, let me have a rundown first because iisa-isahin natin yan sa mga susunod na slides. And then emphasis on uh, the four C's, creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration. Emphasis on ICT and then development of life and career skills. And then yung contextualizing it, the learning to real life uh, situation, and then the implementation or integration of a multi componential technology enhanced assessment. Let me start, start with 21st uh, century themes. Zoom ko lang konte ha. <coughs> okay. So, number one, lima yan eh. <coughs> Number one is the global awareness. No? Pag sinabing global awareness, so doon po sa gagawin ninyong books, siguraduhin natin na hindi na lang palaging, halimbawa, puro sports na lang ang topic or puro sciences na lang ang topics. We have to balance. No? We have to balance the themes that we use in our course material. So sakop niya yung lima na 21st uh, century themes. And the first one na is Global awareness. When we say global awareness, ito yung magbibigay ka ng topics ng uh, alimbawa, uh, European economy. So kung ano yung nangyayari sa ibang, sa ibang uh, bansa, kailangan you have to provide texts then, no? And activities which are related to global awareness. Ngayon, yung, yung pagka Pagkakamali naman, namimiss naman ng iba, pag kumuha ng isang halimbawang text na sa global context, yung text, halimbawa European economy, they stop there na, doon sa global economy. What's crucial to that one is that the materials that you will be producing should li link that particular global topic 
and put it to local context. No? So, irerelate niya ngayon, okay, ano namang kinalaman nun? What's the importance or re re uh, how, how related is it to the context ng Philippines? So, kailangan may ganun din na ilalagay sa uh, course materials. Hindi yung global nga, diniscuss mo yun, and then you stop there. No? So, kailangan you link it to local context. The next one, the next theme is environmental literacy. O, ito yung sa uh, uh, ba yun? yung climate change. No? Uh, so, isasama natin yan dyan. So, anything related to environment. So, we have to have some uh, text then and topics related to that one. Financial uh, literacy, ito ay economy. So, minsan nag-overlap yung global awareness sa financial uh, literacy. No? So, pag economy, uh, personal finance, yan, uh, financial literacy naman yan. Actually, yung DepEd, I am part of a project no, funded by Banco de Oro, BDO, and then we evaluated the integration of financial literacy doon sa basic education. No? Lumibot ako sa iba-ibang lugar sa Philippines at nag-observe ako ng class. Uh, despite the memo that was released by DepEd, yung si Secretary Briones na yung nag-release, <coughs> hindi pa rin talaga na integrate uh, significantly yung concept of financial literacy. I don't know why, because probably the teachers themselves should be financially literate. No? So when you when you uh, this is very crucial to our uh, to our students and to teachers also. So hopefully you can integrate also financial literacy into your CM. And then we also have health literacy. Ito yung anything about physical education and health yan maglagay din po kayo niyan. Yung mga sports yan, lagay niyo dyan. <coughs> and then, civic literacy naman, ito naman yung mga uh, social issues. So, somehow, it will overlap with global awareness. Kasi kung halimbawa, ang topic mo ay social issues at yan ay sa United States, katulad nung nangyari doon kay George Floyd. So, it covers both global, global awareness and um, civic uh, uh, literacy. Okay? So, yun po. Um, please take into consideration itong themes, 21st century themes, because it will balance the, the texts and the tasks that you will be uh, integrating into your course materials. Tandaan natin na ang mga studyante iba-iba ang kanilang interest. And by integrating several themes into your, into your course materials, Eddie, eh, you're hitting two birds in uh, one stone, no? Na hit nyo na 21st century themes, na address nyo pa yung the concept of differentiation, na nag adjust kayo dun sa interest nung inyong uh, studyante. When it comes to uh, forces, actually this one is the traditional. Ito talaga ang the very popular one. Yung collaboration, critical thinking, creativity and communication although it was expanded na nga pala recently um naging uh, pito na siya nalagay yung cultural and ethical citizenship character at saka yung uh, computer and digital technologies either naman parehas sila no but if you want to go to the seven seas that's okay also because it's more comprehensive but let me give you one specific example of a task. Kasi when you give, when you craft a task in your course materials, kilangan natutuhog yan. No? Natutuhog yung forces na yan. Halimbawa, uh, by, by the way, let me clarify first yung concept of task, activities, and exercises. Kasi paulit-ulit kung ginagamit, baka makonfuse kayo dun sa terms. No? Yung bigger umbrella, yung umbrella niya talaga ay yung activities. Okay? Yung activities, it is divided into two. First one is task. Pag sinabing task, ito yung mga real-life activities. Halimbawa, bank transactions. Making yung mga... Uh, ano ba? Yung pag nasa interior design, pag gagawa ka ng uh, uh, design, yun, that's, that's also... Uh, 
a task. Basta may, may semblance sa real life uh, activities. Task ang tawag doon. When you say exercise, ito yung mga true or false, yung mga quiz, yung multiple choice, and yon. Okay? So, nililinaw ko po yung distinction. No? Activities is the umbrella, and under the activities, you have tasks, and you have the Uh, you have the uh, exercises. Okay. Sa exercises, hindi masyadong flexible yan. Hindi, not necessarily maa-apply mo lahat ito, itong mga sis na to. Pero sa task, definitely maa-apply lahat yan. So let me give you an, an example. Halimbawa, I will ask my students to come up with a video. Total naman, online delivery, eh, the one of the most popular ways of, of, uh, of assessing the the performance of students is to ask them to do a video, let's say, um, an ad campaign or an um, advocacy. Yun. An advocacy video. Halimbawa, ang topic nyo sa social science o so papagawain nyo sila ng advocacy uh, video. If you will ask them to do the activity in groups, na pwede naman, di ba? we can still ask them to do the activities in groups. So there's the concept of collaboration. If it's uh, video making, pa, kaya naman niyang gawin uh, remotely. So we can make it uh, pwedeng dalawa by pairs or pwede naman uh, uh, in groups of three or four. But the most, uh, the most ideal grouping talaga is three members. No? Three members in a group. Why? Because... As you expand the number of uh, uh, members in a group, na di disperse yung paggawa ng task. Unless the task that you design ay talagang may clear na kailangan ng anim na members na kanya-kanya ng role. So, pwede yung maging five, six, or seven. Pero pag hindi ganon, the most uh, efficient no uh, <clears throat> uh, grouping is really three. No, para talagang uh, uh, ma malaki yung mako-contribute ng bawat isang group. Now, critical thinking, uh, advocacy video nga, uh, di ba pag critical thinking is problem solving. So, you ask them to uh, figure out a specific problem that they see in the society. Huh? So, pag nakapag-generate sila ng specific problem that their uh, advocacy video would like to address, then they're able to uh, apply the principle of uh, critical thinking. Now, creativity, of course, you ask them to do a video, creativity yun. Okay? And then communication naman, of course, if they work in groups, um, definitely uh, they communicate with uh, one another. But even if it's an individual activity, there's still communication. How? Let's say it's an individual activity, individual activity and the students ask for the feedback from his classmates or feedback from the teacher, meron pa rin communication yun. Um, collaboration, meron din kahit individual activity. Yun ng peer review and teacher review is part of uh, collaboration. So when we design a task, just be sure that we at least indicate or integrate The four C's, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and communication. But ideally, you integrate itong seven, no? seven C's with character. Madali lang naman yan eh. Embedded na yung character sa ganun, yung sa inexplain ko. Culture and ethical citizenship, o yung social, di ba, yung social problem, yung pipiliin nila. So pasok din siya. Computer and digital technology, since you will be asking them to come up with a, an advocacy video and then also require them to post their video via YouTube. Yan, yung sinasabi kong social media is a very, very powerful uh, platform, especially for the outputs of the students because you have ready audience there. If you will, if you will uh, publish your work in uh, high-profile uh, social media platforms like YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Okay. Next, um, <clears throat> pedagogical concept that focuses on skills. Still, we are in uh, the principles. No, Contem must possess 
uh, contemporary learners must possess to survive today's highly globalized economy. So, ay, bumalik pala ako. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Next pala. The next principle is emphasis on ICT or information communication technology, also known as information media and uh, technology. There are three ways on how you can integrate um, um, ICT into your instructional materials. No, You can use ICT as a tool itself. Meaning, the students will use ICT and they will learn how to use ICT. Alimbawa, ako, Zoom. Gumamit ako ng Zoom. Nung nag-explore ako sa Zoom, natuto ako gumamit ng Zoom. So, meaning ICT as a tool. No? In learning uh, ICT itself. Okay? Yung ICT as a tool for teaching, ito naman yung the teachers use PowerPoint, the teachers use LMS, the teachers use social media to teach um, uh, or to deliver the lesson. And then, from the perspective naman of students, ICT as a tool for learning. Yan naman yung may mga um, uh, online activities tayo na binibigay sa estudyante. Tapos yung interactive course materials. No? Tapos yung iba nga ang ginagawa, high-tech eh. Merong gadget, may ang tawag dun? Tab. No? Tapos nakasave na dun sa tab yung uh, lahat ng, uh, I think sa Green Hills to eh, Lasal Green Hills, nakasave na dun sa tab yung lahat ng mga uh, IMs no? for each subject. So, andun na lahat. So, kaya niya sagutan lahat dun. Tapos, pag sinagutan yung mga <clears throat> exercises dun, para ma-address naman yung assessment kasi yun ang isang problema sa online delivery eh. Paano mangyayari yung assessment? Paano makakapagbigay ng feedback yung teacher? Pag gano'n ang context, di ba? That's, that's very, very difficult. So, yun, maa-address yun kung yung mga gano'ng uh, ways na high-tech na pag sumagot ang bata, may feedback agad, may annotations, lalabas. Oh, your answer is wrong because blah, 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 blah. May paliwanag agad. Parang yung Grammarly na software. No? And by the way, pag nagsulat po kayo ng instructional materials, para naman matanggal yung mga grammatical lapses, subject nyo din sa Grammarly. No? Maganda yon. Kasi yung sa Grammarly naman, copy, tapos paste mo yung text, ide-detect niya yung error, ito kaya maganda sa English din yung Grammarly, tapos Grammarly explains why it is wrong, tapos nagsasuggest din kung ano yung, kung ano yung uh, dapat na gamitin na... na na grammar dun sa particular uh, sentence. Okay? So, uh, so feedback is very important. So, pag gano'ng mga high-tech gadgets, magagawa natin yung, yung uh, assessment part. Pag wala nun, edi let's try to be more creative kung paano natin uh, ma-execute. Halimbawa, offline learning o paano ang feedback dun kung walang gano'n. Diba? So, we will try to figure out ways on how to address the assessment and feedback part. Ito yung sa life career skills. Um, ang component niya, yung flexibility, adaptability, initiative, and self-direction. No? Meaning, he can manage his own ano, uh, purpose and uh, aims, objectives. No? And then social and cross-cultural skills uh, related to intercultural competence productivity, kasama dyan yung time management, diba? accountability, hindi yung nagtuturo ng nagtuturo, siya nagkamali, tapos turo ng turo sa iba. No? Leadership and responsibility, um, pag ito, halimbawa, pag renew mo na sila, makikita mo dyan kung sino yung responsible at saka yung hindi responsible. So, when we draft tasks in our course materials, let's try to make sure that we are also targeting life and career skills. No? <clears throat> and if I may, wala yun, wala yun dito eh. But let me, let me, uh, wala sa PowerPoint ko. But let me share with you, um, if I may direct you in reading the 2020 skills uh, needed by the industry, uh, from our from our graduates, no. Um, 
mas maganda i-integrate yun. Ano-ano ito? Itong mga 2020 na mga trendy, 2022 trending skills. Number one, yung analytical thinking and innovation. Number two, active learning and learning strategies. And then three, creativity, originality, and initiative. Although pumasok naman yata yung mga attributes na na-mention natin kanina. Four, technology design and uh, programming. Five, critical thinking and analysis. Six, complex problem solving. Seven, leadership and social influence. Eight, EQ. No? So trending din pala yung talaga yung EQ sa 2022. Nine, reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. And then ten, systems, analysis, and evaluation. Uh, try to read na lang po ang ano. Makikita nyo to yung sa report ng uh, World Economic Forum yata, if I'm not mistaken. World Economic Forum. You just type in in Google yung trending skills ng 2022 at magpa-pop up naman yun yung detailed skills. So, when you try to develop your course materials, you try to integrate these skills also. But again, ito namang skills na ito na mention na rin natin dun sa ano, yung sa graduate attributes that I have presented a while back. Next is relevance to real life needs and context. Okay. So, when you come up with activities in your course materials, it is very important na lalo na these are college students As much as possible, baka mga 90% of all the tasks that you ask them to do, kailangan related dun sa ano, dun sa program. Halimbawa, ABCOM. AB Communication. So pag si teacher nagturo, karamihan dapat dun sa context na yon. Kaya nga yung the challenge now is on GE. Kasi I also, since I'm also the dean of the, yung sa Education, Arts, and Sciences, and I also handle GE. The challenge is, kada subject, pag nag-shift ka sa ibang ano, pag nag-shift ka sa ibang, sa ibang uh, course na mga studyante, mag-iiba ka ng activities. No? Iti-tweak mo yung activities mo para mag-match doon sa realities ng uh, studyante. So, pa What, what 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 do I do with that one? So one strategy that we did was um, we assigned teachers. Alimbawa, ito si Teacher A, o dyan ka muna magturo sa ano, College of Architecture for one, for one term. Puro College of Architecture. Tapos sa susunod, sa iba naman. Para yung lahat ng activities niya geared toward architecture without naman compromising din yung too much uh, preparation on the part of the on the part of the teacher so again going back to this one kailangan you contextualize it to the realities of the students particularly to the program where the student belongs so that they will see the value of it so even if it's GE ganun din no we yan ang tawag diyan ay uh, Learning, uh, learning for a specific purpose. Okay, learning for specific uh, purpose. Kumbaga targeted sa program. Next application of multi-componential and technology enhanced assessment. So since flexible learning, ah, kailangan yung inyong assessment aside from multi-componentials. And I'll talk about then later yung sa assessment uh, uh, schemes. Multi-componential, ibig sabihin, marami kang ginagawang mga assessment activities. Hindi puro paper and pencil. Hindi naman ang puro activities, puro tasks lang. No? So you combine different types and different forms of assessment activities. Yun ang tinatawag na multi-componential assessment. Technology enhanced, of course, you use the, the power of technology to assess the performance of students. No, one thing that I do there and one thing that I incorporate in my in the textbooks that I uh, do is meron akong part doon sa mga textbook na uh, online activities, no? Let's practice online yun yung label niya. Let's practice online. So doon sa let's practice online, meron yang mga link ng mga activities related to the topic nabibisitahin ng mga estudyante they will click it they visit the link and then and then they will 
they will uh, complete the activities there and very ano very strategic ang pagpili ko dun sa mga activities kasi when the students answered the activities eto nga to answer yung the, the problem on uh, the challenge on giving feedback once na submit nila yung sagot may automatic ano yun may automatic uh, results tapos bukod dun sa results merong explanation why are you wrong in this item so ganon so let's try to let's try to use the power of uh, technology katulad ng paggamit ng social media in exhibiting or displaying the performances of our students that's a very very powerful powerful tool why because when we use social media may tatlong puwersa na gumagana doon para yung estudyante ay mas galingan ang performance. Number one, of course, that's very interactive and it's more engaging for the students. Number two, meron sila agad captured audience. Alam nila na kapag pinost nila yung kanilang work, eh may magbabasa, may manonood doon sa performance nila or doon sa kanilang output. And the third one is yung social pressure. No? Social pressure dahil alam nila na ipapublish no? yung kanilang work, then yung mga estudyante ay <clears throat> mapipressure ngayon to do their best. No? Sa simula, based on my two studies that I've conducted on this one, sa simula may anxiety. But the anxiety is enabling anxiety. No? Yung isa kasi debilitating anxiety. So yung enabling anxiety, it pushes them to perform better. Yun ang nagiging impact ng uh, pagpo-post ng mga work ng mga estudyante sa social media platform. Kaya lang minsan, wag naman yung super public, no? Yung 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 uh, accessibility of the work, no? Kaya namang i-restrict yun halimbawa sa Facebook, you can probably restrict it to let's say 200 friendly audience so yung hindi alam mong hindi ka ibabash no so you can limit it to them para naman ma-lessen yung anxiety din of the students so let's try to use the power of technology especially now that we are uh, about to use uh, flexible learning <clears throat> now let's try to um i want you to uh answer this activity uh, since you cannot do groupings here, uh, you just do it individually. Um, so you have three three columns here: the CLO, and then the classification, and then the level of learning. No, you try to focus on HOTS, no higher order thinking skills. Yung HOTS ang level ng CLO, meaning course learning outcomes. You can just get it from the syllabus that you have. Ko kalang isa. Tapos, pagkakuha mo ng isang learning outcome, you can tweak it, tweak it a bit para makasunod dun sa guidelines na uh, diniscuss natin. And then you classify them. Yun na lang KSA. Let's just use the KSA, no? Knowledge, skill, and attitude. So you try to classify that CLO, whether it's knowledge, it's skill, or attitude. And then, um, level of learning naman is um, ito yung creating synthesizing yung kibloom synthesizing um analyzing applying comprehending and understanding okay so you can choose the the level from any of those uh six okay i'll probably give you five minutes to complete your work and if the system permits, no, let's ask like uh, three participants to share their output so we can talk about it. You may you may start doing completing the table, Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you have anything to say to the participants? Is it possible that once they completed this, simply lang naman to, no? Uh, three participants can show their output. Yes, sir. We will. We will. Uh -oh, sige. So let's have five minutes uh, to complete the task. And then later, siguro you can choose na lang kung sino yung makakapag-present. Okay, sir. Noted. Bo. Okay. Sige. Thank you.
Okay, so our five minutes is over. I think um, we have to ask our participants if there are those who would like to volunteer to present their work from the given task of our resource speaker. For any volunteer, open your video, please, to be recognized. If no volunteer, then I will be choosing from the group the first presenter. For those who would like to volunteer, you can comment um, inside our chat room or you can please open your, your video to be recognized. Anyone from our participating colleagues from the different universities, any volunteer who would like to share their output from the task given by our resource person. So I guess, Sir Dr. Jesse, there are no volunteers. Um, I will be choosing one representative from 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 the school. Sure, I'm sure taga Ebs so kaya kaya yan. I went there already. I talked about this already there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so I think um, <coughs> we'd like to request from okay from our host university. Late. Yeah, from Eastern Visaya State University. Ah, like Eastern to, Visayas. Yeah, I would like to request um. Pam Pearl from the College of Arts and Sciences. Are you there, please? Hi, ma'am. Yes, sir, I'm here, but I wasn't able to get the, um, the level of learning part. Okay. Le le level of learning is the yung Bloom's taxonomy, um, creating, um, understanding, evaluating, uh, analyzing, applying, understanding, comprehend. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull out a, a syllabus here. Okay, Mom Pearl, are you still there? Yeah. Yes, uh, for example, this is not actually the, um, this is an example of uh, program learning outcomes. So for example, um, ex exhibit comprehensive knowledge of various learning areas in the secondary curriculum. Um, and then the next, next um, column was, the next column was, what, what's the next column again? It's a classification. Yeah. Okay. Classification. For the...
Hello. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Hello, Ma'am Pearl. Uh, for the classification, uh, you have to focus on the knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Hello, sir. I'm sorry. Um, it, it would be uh, on three, the knowledge, skills, and attitude. The case A, the one that uh, Dr. Barrett was uh, mentioning earlier during the presentation. Sir, somebody is, I'm sorry, so sort of somebody is, is actually trying to give an answer. Can we, can we give them the floor, please? Uh, okay, ma'am, noted. Okay, so I think um, Mom Lucille Doliado from uh nwssu uh mom are you are you there can you please open your your video for you to be recognized please uh yes ma'am can you please unmute your your microphone okay now Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. It would be better if you present it uh, via video. Okay. So for the course learning outcome, perform a map, demonst a map demonstration lesson of any method studied. Then classification is skill, level of learning, applying. Is it okay? Well, I, I think that's a very good, uh, very clear, no, very clear and very good answer because it's perform a mock demo of any teaching method. No? So, yes. talagang isang banggit lang na intindihan agad. It's very clear, very, very direct. No? Dapat ganun yung mga learning outcomes. No? So, I, I really like the, the, the way it was stated. And definitely, it's a uh, skill skill based no? because they will do a teaching demo and then yes it's applying because they will be uh, using what they have understood in a particular context and particularly it's it's uh, specifically it's on the teaching context so very good answer I really like that uh, it seems that it's very, very clear yeah thank okay you. very uh, thank you ma'am uh, sir uh, doc Jesse, there is another one from um, EVSU College of Engineering. Um, yep, Marina sure. Pedrosa, please. Ma'am, can you open your video to be recognized, please? Hello, good afternoon, Sir Jess. Um, Hello, good afternoon. Good to see Namis you. I miss engineering. <laughs> uh -oh. So, uh -huh. mine was same with mom, but mine was for under um, my subject, um, material testing. So, my Course learning outcome was classify the soil sample using the sieve analysis result. My classification classify the uh, classify classi the soil sample soil using sample. the sieve analysis results. Uh -huh. um, mine was scale for the next column. Then the level of learning is also <laughs> applying. Is that correct? Classify. Um, okay. Let um, when it comes to the learning outcomes, it's very clear. No? The verb is very clear. The object of the verb is very clear. So class classify the soil sample. I'm not just so sure if it's really under skills or under more of, of uh, knowledge. Oh, yeah. I also wrote it here. <laughs> I have two answers for knowledge and uh, the other uh, is assessing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. unless, un unless the... Kaya dapat talaga nako-contextualize din siya. Yung pag-classify, meron kasi minsan pag nag-classify ka, yung literal yung kikilos yung ano eh, kikilos yung bata, di ba? Uh, pero pag nasa realm of concept, 
then it would fall under uh, knowledge. No? Knowledge category siya. Um, and then for the level of learning, since it's more of knowledge and classification, it's more of nag, ano ka eh, nag-breakdown ka ng information. So since nag-breakdown ka ng information, it, is, it would fall under um, analysis. Okay. Actually, mas mataas pa sa apply. Yeah, kasi yung apply is level 3. Eh. Analysis naman is level 4. So, okay. but but the, the learning outcome is very very clear, no? Katulad nung nauna, uh, at a glance, you can re- immediately understand the the focus and the target of the learning outcome. Uh, siguro we just have to make it more of uh, more of um, knowledge, knowledge category and then uh, analysis, mas ano pa, higher level yung tinarget niya. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Probably okay, last uh, one. Yeah, yeah, sir. Jesse, we have last um, one to volunteer for the presentation, and that is from uh, Biliran State, Univer- State University. Uh, sir Paul Matthew Bentor, please uh, kindly open your video for to be recognized from Biliran Province State University. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, please. Um, can I share my screen? Okay, uh, we would like to request Sir uh, Worley again. Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Ah. Yep, it's clear. <clears throat> um, this is for, um, of course, uh, programming languages. Uh, <clears throat> so this is one of the course learning outcomes. So design an mm-hmm. interpreter <clears throat> compiler for a simple programming language. And then for the classification, uh, I'm actually <clears throat> not very sure. That's why it's since um, there's some skills that you have to also apply and then there's also knowledge. That's why I place knowledge slash skills and for the level of learning it's application okay so thank you for that presentation sir um then it's when you when you classify the los whichever is higher that's the one that you have to use so in this particular case since it falls under knowledge based on the explanation and skills then we just tag it under uh, skill. Kasi ini- binivisualize ko din yung LO. Mukhang skills ang ano eh, target niya. Eh, programming kasi. So, I think it's more of uh, more of skills. Tama rin naman yung nakasulat. No? We just have to uh, take out yung uh, skills part. Uh, yung uh, knowledge part. And then for the uh, for, for the level, I think the one that was used was apply. Um would you be able to expound how it becomes apply instead of create level? Um, yes, sir. Um, in in the course itself, um, what the students learn is just the principles uh, mm-hmm. of different programming languages. It's like they learn how the programming language works. And then, uh-huh. in my opinion, it's application because the concepts that they have learned uh, they will use this in designing and creating the interpreter and compiler. Aha, aha, aha. hindi hindi ko naman area yung ano sa IT. Pero sa sa layman's ano ko view, parang feeling ko it's under create, but it really depends on the nature na of the of the activity. If it will, will just fall under uh, under um, apply part. So, but even if you put that naman sa apply, tama rin naman. No? I'm just not so sure if it would also fall under uh, the create level, which is the highest. Yan, pinakamataas yes. sa lahat. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir, for that uh, presentation. No? The, LO, the LO is very clear also. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. Now, let's proceed to, uh, let me share again. 
Mr. Moderator, can I proceed now to the presentation again? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, sige. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay, so let me go to Okay, yun. So we talked about uh, I mentioned a while back yung multi-componential assessment. So let's proceed now to the assessment part. <coughs> okay, actually sa lahat talaga ng ano, I really love assessment, no? Because uh, this shows us whether we really achieve what we want to achieve. Eh? Uh, so pag mali yung assessment mo, mali yung resulta talaga. Mali yung makukuha natin na data. Yan ang natrain din sa akin pag gumagawa ako ng research. Eh. So we have the means should be correct so that the, the results will also be uh, correct. So, but ito yung com confusing concept concepts for some. No? They, they really don't know how to distinguish measurement from assessment uh, from uh, evaluation. Although if you will really search uh, some references online, and all of these are really, really reputable, no? reputable references, nag vary yung kanilang definition. But like more or less 70% of these uh, reputable references would tell us that the umbrella is assessment. <clears throat> no? Yung assessment under niya, yung measurement and evaluation. Now, what's the difference between measurement and evaluation? Of course, you take it from the term. Kaya nga siya tinawag na measurement, um, quantitative yan. Diba? Halimbawa, 8 out of 10 sa oh, quantitative yun. Nakakuha siya ng 95, quantitative yun. So, measurement yan. Yung mga nakakuha sa mga board exam, measurement yun. Yung evaluation naman, it's, you take it from the term also, value, so it's more of qualitative form of assessment no so but it doesn't matter what's important is <clears throat> what's important is we apply the basic principles or fundamental principles of assessment but what is assessment no assessment is an overarching concept of of um, appraising no the learning of our students. Pwede yung ginagawa sa simula, pwede yung habang nangyayari yung teaching learning process yung, uh, sa klase, at pwede rin naman sa huli siya ginagawa. No? So flexible talaga yung uh, assessment. And, and we all know that it's really flexible. <clears throat> now, when it comes to principle, Ang kalimitan na papaliwanag lang sa atin are the two principles like like reliability and validity. But it's beyond these two uh, principles of assessment. We also have practicality, we also have consequences, and we have authenticity. Okay, but let me start first with reliability and validity. My first question is: is for us to grasp the concept of reliability and validity. First question is, are all reliable tests valid? <clears throat> That's the first question that you, you may want to reflect on. The second question is, are all valid tests reliable? Para lang, you would understand the difference between the two. No? So let's go back to the uh, First question, are all reliable tests valid? The answer is no. Hindi lahat. Why? Halimbawa, I'll just make an analogy na lang. Uh, Nagdadart ako at ang gusto kong tamaan ay puno. Diba? Gusto kong tamaan ay puno. Pero nung pag nagbumabato ako, ang palagi kong natatamaan yung yung uh, carabao na nakatali dun sa puno. At paulit-ulit, bato ako ng bato, yung carabao ng carabao ang tinatamaan ko. So, yun ay reliable. No? Kasi consistente. Eh. Pero valid ba yun? It's not valid. Kasi ang target ko yung puno, hindi ko siya natamaan. Now, the second question. 
are all valid tests reliable? Of course, the answer here is yes. Kasi if I will target the tree at bato ako ng bato, yun pa rin palagi ang natatamaan ko, it's valid at the same time, it's reliable. So it's the same with our learning outcomes that we will put in our course materials. No? Kapag naglagay ka dyan na halimbawa, exhibit mastery of statistical techniques. No? Exhibit mastery of statistical techniques. Yun ang iyong learning outcome na nilagay sa course material. Tapos, pag chinek mo ngayon yung lahat ng activities, eh niwala kahit isa na activity or task or assessment na tinatarget yung learning outcome na yun. Therefore, your material is invalid. Hindi kasi niya tinatamaan yung target na ano eh, learning outcome. So, we, we have to make sure no, we have to make sure that we are hitting or we are targeting all of the learning outcomes that we have stipulated in our uh, course materials. Pag hindi na target yun, magiging invalid. Baliwala. Para lang naglaro kayo. No? Kapag hindi na target yung lahat ng learning outcomes. Kaya I'll go back to the basic principle. Kailangan first, play, first things first. Tama yung pagkakalagay ng mga at pagkakakraft ng uh, learning outcomes. Okay. When we say reliable, <coughs> halimbawa, sa English, minsan yung bata pag nag-grammar quiz sa subject verb agreement, they will get a perfect score. Like 10 out of 10 makukuha nila dun sa grammar quiz. No? Pero pag pinagsulat mo na sila ng uh, essay, yung buong essay, hala, meron ng ano, naglalaban na yung verb at saka yung subject. No? Um, so, ibig sabihin, hindi reliable ang test na ginawa mo. So, it's either may problema dun sa quiz or may problema dun sa essay, but my hunch there, my assumption there is that may mali doon sa quiz. Baka masyadong madali. Ang napiling mga items doon sa quiz ay masyadong madali. No? Hindi, hindi siya na plat ng maayos para mapili yung difficulty level din ng, ng mga uh, items. So that's what we mean by reliable. So, ang implication ngayon yan, kung meron kang tinetest na isang halimbawang learning outcome, it's always better para ma-check yung reliability of your assessment. It's always better to have at least two, <clears throat> no? At least two activities that will target that specific, one specific learning outcome. Kasi ang ginagawa ng iba, may one learning outcome ka, pero isa lang ang corresponding activity. E eh, paano mo matetest ngayon kung ano? Okay, valid nga siya, pero reliable ba yung ginawa mong assessment? It will be very, very difficult. So uh, when, you, when you make your activities, when you choose your activities and develop, design your activities for your course materials, let's make it sure that there are at least two activities that will target one specific learning outcome. That is to observe the principle of reliability and uh, validity. Now, <clears throat> let me go back lang a bit baka hindi ko tumabanggit later eh. Yung sa practicality, consequence, and authenticity. Uh, let's start with practicality. Siyempre, halimbawa, if you're uh, simplihan ko na lang. Halimbawa ay walang gadget yung mga estudyante for the assessment. Uh, gagamit ka ba ng isang assessment, uh, assessment tool? na napaka-complex when it comes to uh, technology, of course, you will not do that. Another one is this, practicality. Um, sa board exam, um, sometimes, halimba, practice-based ang profession. No? And the common sense will dictate, dapat yung summative assessment mo, practice-based din, performance-based. Pero we consider their practicality. That's why Instead of performance based, ang ginagawa na lang natin is um, yung MCQ type, which is a very flexible type of uh, assessment. Yun. So that's that's what we mean by um, practicality. Um, authenticity uh, is divided into two. 
it has to be authentic text and authentic ta task. No? Again, uh, what we mean by authenticity is it has a semblance of real life, no? real life context. So pag authentic text, andyan yung gagamit ka ng mga newspaper, yung mga sa magazine, yung mga video from CNN, yung mga pinapalabas sa TV ng mga telenovela, yung mga ganun, mga movies, yan. Authentic, ano yan? Authentic uh, text yan. Authentic task naman is kailangan the activities that the students do should be what's happening also outside. O halimbawa, uh, bank transaction. So that that's uh, authentic uh, task for students na halimbawa nasa field ng um, accountancy. No? Um, kaya lang, may, dapat lang yung, although it's authentic task, it should be within the social realities of the student. Kung ang studyante mo grade 2, tapos ang activity mo ay bank transactions, oo, oh, oh, it's authentic task. But it's beyond the social reality of the student. So kailangan sa pool din yung social realities ng studyante. Kaya ang Palagi kong ine-emphasize, even in other trainings, kailangan learning for specific purposes. No? Yung mga estudyante sa ganitong course, lahat ng mga activities, as much as possible, i-align sa kanilang realities. No? Para may authenticity, yung principle of authenticity ay ma-integrate. Uh, for the consequence naman, um, ito yung... Um, Meron kasi tayong high stake at saka low stake. Yung mga high stake, yung mga board exam yan, diba? Ang mga low stake naman ay yung mga quizzes. So ano yung impact niyan sa assessment? Mas mataas ang consequence, yung mga high stake, mas matindi dapat na ma-insure ang reliability and validity ng assessment. Pag naman uh, low stake, yung, yung uh, low stake o low impact yung consequence, hindi mo naman kailangan na mag-test pa na may mga statistics, no? na mga may reliability test pa. Hindi naman. Ang pagaganahin nyo na lang dyan ay yung intuition ng uh, teacher tsaka yung knowledge, pedagogical skills and pedagogical sk uh, knowledge of the uh, teacher. So that's, that's what we mean by the principle of consequence. <clears throat> now, let me show you now yung sa validity at saka reliability. So validity, we have content. We have construct validity. We have uh, face validity, predictive, and concurrent. Pag reliability naman, internal consistency, test test, test interrater, equivalent forms. Now, let me explain this one by one. Um, pag sinabing content validity, dyan tayo gumagawa ng table of specifications. No? Table of specifications. Alam naman natin yung table of specifications. Kaya lang, the problem here is that when teachers or instructional materials developers um, uh, create a table of specification or scope and sequence, ang nagiging basihan nila ay yung uh, topic o kaya yung number of hours devoted to that particular topic. No, it's not how it should be done. No? Pag ginawa niyo yung ganung type of table of specification which is based on the number of hours or yung the topic itself, no? yung mga major topics, it loses the, the validity itself of, of, of the course materials that you'll be preparing. Kasi hindi niya tinatarget yung mga learning competencies or learning outcomes. So that's why when you prepare your table of specifications or scope and sequence for your course, course materials, it has to be based on the learning outcomes. Okay? So the guiding principle there is learning outcome. Hindi yung oras, hindi yung topic. Kasi sa topic, maraming learning outcomes yan. Okay? Yung topic learning outcomes na tinatawag. So, so that's how you will, how you will uh, practice content validity. Um, construct validity naman, syempre yung activity mo dapat mag-match dun sa nature nung measure mo. Halimbawa, you are measuring the speaking performance of the student. Magpapa MCQ ka ba sa isang uh, learning outcome na ang tina-target ay makapag-deliver ng uh, isang uh, speech? Definitely not. Pag ginawa niyo yun, basag na agad yung construct validity ng inyong assessment. So if your learning outcome is deliver a speech, wag mag-MCQ. Dapat mag-deliver talaga sila ng speech. Huh? Um, hindi pwedeng porke flexible learning, 
ay hindi, mag-quiz na lang tayo, mag-final exam na lang tayo ng multiple choice or identification kasi mahirap mag-upload ng mga video, blah, blah. Eh, wala rin, baliwala ang mangyayari. So, um, as much as possible, um, kung ano yung, kung ano yung uh, learning outcome, that's the same activity or task that we have to give to our students. Okay, face validity is when you ask someone to review or to edit your uh, work. O, limbawa, naggawa ka ng mga assessment activities, pa-check mo dun sa program head, no? sa program chair or department head. I-check niya yung grammar, i-check niya yung content, yung facts, i-check niya yung pedagogy. So, tapos magbigay ng feedback sa'yo, sometimes quantitative or both quantitative and qualitative. Uh, that's face, uh, face validity. Predictive validity, Mm, palagay ko sa course material, hindi naman masyado to, wala masyadong um, <clears throat> impact. Pero halimbawa, ang, ang, ang example nito, yung uh, admission halimbawa ay nagpa, nagpa uh, admission test, tapos ibabangga yun sa performance ng bata sa classroom. Pag nagmatch yon malakas ang predictive validity nung yung admission test. Now, concurrent validity is um, Let's say yung binigay ko kanina na example uh, sa grammar, nagpa, nagpa, nagpa uh, grammar quiz ka, tapos mababa yung kanyang, uh, mataas yung kanyang score doon. Tapo, tapos nung nagpa -deliver, nagpasulat ka ng essay, ang daming mali, walang concurrent, ano yun, walang concurrent validity, hindi nagmatch, no? May, may disagreement sa dalawa. For reliability, internal consistency, ito yung ginagawa naman sa research na mag, mag, yung test na ginawa mo, halimbawa multiple choice, uh, i-administer mo, tapos i-compute mo yung Cronbach Alpha, kung alin yung mga mabababa yung Cronbach Alpha, tatanggalin yung mga items na yon. So that's in, internal uh, consistency. Test retest, itong test na to, binigay mo sa studyante, tapos after four weeks, binigay mo uli, pag halos parehas ang score, ayun, may test, retest, reliability yon. Interrater naman, halimbawa, um, nag-check ng essay ng mga bata ay dalawang teachers. No? Titingnan mo ngayon kung nagmamatch yung mga scores na binigay ng dalawang teachers. Um, ang tawag doon ay interrater reliability. Pag parehas ang score na binigay, edi eh uh, reliable yung assessment na binigay doon sa bata. But, but this is more of scientific na eh. No? Uh, yung mga typical na nangyayari sa classroom, hindi naman ito masyadong uh, pinapractice. And then the last one, which can be practiced in your course materials, is equivalent forms. Ano yung equivalent forms? Ito yung... sa Halimbawa ay yung pre-test and post-test. By the way, when you prepare your course materials, please make sure that you have the pre-test and the post-test. Okay? Uh, para makita nyo yung ito yung baseline performance ng studyante and then after uh, using the course materials, ito na yung kanyang uh, performance. Um, what do you mean by equivalent forms? Dapat halos parehas yung yung uh, difficulty level ng pre-test at saka ng post-test. No? Pero huwag niyong gagamitin yung kung ano yung pre-test, siya rin yung post-test. Why? Because familiarity to the assessment improves the performance of the students by as much as 20%. Per, um, <coughs> 20 so wala, nakontaminate na yung inyong uh, data. Um, i-tweak nyo lang yung ano, i-tweak nyo lang yung yung uh, post sa halimbawa kung ang topic nyo, halimbawa essay ang topic nyo dun sa sa pretest ay poverty pwedeng yung topic nyo naman dun sa post test ay climate change no or pwedeng nyo namang papiliin yung estudyante ng topic sa pretest pwedeng nyo rin silang papiliin ng topic for their essay sa post test pero iba ng ibang ano ibang kaibang topics yung pipiliin niya okay and these same principles can be applied in other uh, subject areas like computer science engineering humanities basta ganun ang principle equivalent forms wag masyado dapat parehas din ang difficulty level and format no yung dalawang uh, 
uh, uh, tests. Okay. Um, ito yung example of sa validity naman, no? yung matching of action verbs to the assessment activity. Example, integrate technology in teaching uh, mathematics. O hindi magpapa-teaching demo ako. Diba? Tapos magpapagawa ako sa kanya ng lesson plan. And then I'll be using a rubric or a checklist to assess the performance of the student. So, kita nyo may validity kasi integrate technology sa teaching, tapos teaching demo yung papagawa ko. Exhibit the capacity for self-reflection. E di magpapagawa ako, papasulat ako ng reflective essay. Tapos yung reflective essay, I, in assessing it, I'll be using a rubric also. Pero kapag reflective essay, essay kasi, o mga reflections, hindi nyo bibigyan ng grade yung the, the, halimbawa yung gamit ng language, no? or yung the content itself, ang inyo lang i-assess doon ay uh, kung, kung, kung malalim ba yung kanilang reflection. No? Pero crucial dito yung guide questions na ibibigay ninyo doon sa mga estudyante during reflection. Uh, kasi kapag napaka-generic ng inyong reflective question, eh di ma-superficial yung reflection ng estudyante. So you'd rather give them a... Uh, uh, Guide very good guide questions for their uh, reflection, and then another one is deliver deliver a five minute five minute extemporaneous speech. Of course, the assessment there is speech delivery. Uh, it will be assessed using a rubric. These are the six categories. Because it's so many categories of assessment that are different from the others. So I categorize this into six: summative versus formative assessment of learning. Uh, for learning and as learning, self-assessment, peer teacher, traditional alternative, selected response and <clears throat> constructed, and then formal and informal. Let's start with, ito yung sample, samples of um, summative and formative assessment. Of course, if it's summative assessment, ito yung ginagawa na sa end part, no? Wala na siyang washback effect na tinatawag. Yung wala na siyang masyadong tama dun sa teaching and learning process. Kasi summative nga siya. Ang example niyan ay yung mga <clears throat> culminating task and activities. Although may tama yan sa next year level siguro or next term, uh, do doon naman. Pero hindi masyado. Ano. Yung talagang meron, a good example of summative assessment ay yung mga board exams. Kasi pagka board exam mo, determine yan whether you pass or not. So, purely talaga, purely summative. Yung mga formative naman, ito yung may tama doon sa teaching and learning process. No? So sa kalagitnaan ng, ng halimbawa ng isang term or semester, ito yung mga ginagawa natin like quizzes, yung mga enabling tasks and activities, yung portfolio, nagbibigay ka ng feedback, and then peer review when you ask your students to exchange their output and then give comments to each other's uh, work. Um, assessment, ito, very recent. Asse not so recent pala. Um, 1990s, uh, unang na-introduce tong concept na to. <clears throat> assessment of learning, for learning, and as learning. Yung of learning is similar to summative. Uh, parehas lang sila. Yung for learning is similar to formative assessment. Yung assessment as learning... It is also similar with formative assessment. Kaya lang, it is more of metacognition. No? Metacognition, meaning pag nag-reflect siya, pag uh, yung mga uh, learning journals niya, yung mga reading logs niya. No? So, if it relates to metacognition, then that's what you call uh, assessment as learning. No? A good example of this also is self-assessment. Nag-perform ako, i-assess ko yung sarili kong output using a rubric that's a form of assessment as learning. Um, ito, very clear naman ang distinction, self-assessment, yung studyante yung gumawa. Um, peer assessment, you ask your classmate to evaluate your work or give feedback to your performance and output. And then uh, you have the teacher assessment. Um, as much as possible, yung self-assessment at saka peer assessment ay hindi dapat yan talaga kasama sa computation of grade. 
no? Kasi it's really formative. Actually, the very concept of formative, kailangan hindi siya masyado mabigat sa ano eh. Yung sa criteria of grading, wag niyong bigyan ng masyadong malaking percent yung formative assessment because it's unfair for student. Kaya nga formative, you are just forming them. No? Ang bigyan niyo ng uh, malaking percent doon sa grading ay yung summative. Kasi talagang may assumption na, na naibigay ko na sa iyo yung lahat ng mga formative uh, assessment and support and scaffolding. Okay? I-assess ko na talaga yung talagang um, actual performance mo. Okay? So, going back to self and peer assessment, as much as possible, you don't assign a score. Ang mahalaga, it's a critical and and it's a required phase no so pwede niyo itong i-integrate doon sa inyong course materials na gagawin uh, mag self assess muna sila after self assess uh, re review their work and performance and then go to peer assessment task review and revise the performance again and then saka pa lang pupunta si uh, teacher assessment. Pwede rin naman na simultaneous but typically it's linear. Self-assessment po na para may uh, gradation no? uh, of uh, improvement doon sa output and performance of the uh, students. <coughs> traditional and alternative. Traditional, it's the paper and pencil. Alternative, other forms of assessment aside from aside from um, uh, paper and pencil. But my favorite here talaga is the portfolio assessment. Portfolio is a very, very powerful form of an alternative and formative assessment. Ito yung, um, yung studyante, uh, this, is, this cuts across, no? cuts across all uh, subjects. Um, the students are asked to compile all of their output sa isa, let's say, sa isang clear book, if it's conventional. Pero ako kasi, ang ginagawa ko sa portfolio, that's e-portfolio, electronic portfolio. No? I ask my students to compile their work using uh, through social media at uh, in digital form para wala rin mga masyadong bibit-bitin yung studyante. Tapos safe then yung files pag especially pag naka-save yan sa sa cloud no so portfolio or e-portfolio is a very very powerful powerful form of assessment it will take us a whole day to discuss how to do a uh, portfolio but typically yung mga best output nila yung nilalagay diyan tapos uh, nagre-reflect ang bata dun sa kanilang development yung kanilang progress over one term or one semester and then, yun, uh, students also are graded based on a certain criteria. Okay, next is selected response and constructed response. Um, selected response, may options, syempre, yung mga students like multiple choice, true or false. Yung mga constructed response naman, students will, will put a specific answer to the, to the question like fill in the blanks, identification, yan, yung mga performance-based assessments, um, yun yung uh, examples of constructed response um, assessment. Yung closed test naman, para din yung fill in the uh, fill in the blanks. No? Parang it's the sophisticated version lang. Example, I'll, I'll get one text from a newspaper tapos iba blanco ko lahat doon yung mga uh, verbs tapos the students will supply the correct verbs doon sa mga blanks sa, sa doon sa blanks doon sa uh, worksheet which is uh, taken from the newspaper so that's what we mean by closed test formal and informal itong formal ito yung <clears throat> mga standard no standardized standardized test. Yung informal naman, these are the types of assessment that we do inside the classroom. So, if you will notice, yung lahat ng mga lahat ng mga assessment uh, activities na to, may mga overlapping at may mga crisscrossing na nangyayari. But at least, um, you would know now 
how to distinguish one type of assessment from others. Uh, and you would be able to know now how you will be combining all of these assessment activities to make sure that uh, you will be hitting all the, the learning outcomes that you will be targeting no, for your course materials. Now, going to uh, technology enhanced assessment, I've mentioned a while back ePortfolio. So you can use, you can actually save it in a CD if you want. You can save it in cloud or Google Drive. Pwede rin naman yun. Pero ang most powerful kasi is kailangan may target audience. No? That's why you can explore social media as an e-portfolio uh, platform. <clears throat> now, you can also ask your students to do some online tasks and tests. Ito yung uh, na-mention ko kanina dun sa mga books that I uh, prepare. Merong portion dun uh, that students will visit those links and then the students will answer those activities online. Technology-mediated tasks and activities. In case na magkaroon na kayo ng face-to-face -face, uh, face -face, um, sessions, <coughs> You can you can try yung like Kahoot no Kahoot is it's it's a very interesting uh, um, technology for teaching and learning. Ito yung parang magkikwiz sila, tapos itataas nila yung sagot nila sa isang paper, tapos isaskan lang ng phone mo yung mga sagot nila, tapos automatic mare reflect na yung resulta nung kanilang mga sagot. Pag alimbawa, may mga pa-quiz bi kayo sa classrooms. Um, you can also use here Grammarly, di ba? And, and by the way pala, uh, you can also use Grammarly when you prepare your uh, instructional materials. Napakadali kasi I'm an editor-in-chief na dati of, uh, of a big publishing company and editor-in-chief of journals. Pero pag nagsusulat ako, may nang nakikita pa rin si Grammarly na ano, mga minor errors or typographical errors no so that's why when you kung hindi man magaling masyado hindi naman lahat gifted sa grammar and language no so you can probably use grammarly also when you prepare your instructional materials para maiwasan din yung mga plagiarism kasi it also checks for uh for uh plagiarism uh, remember, pag yung mga ano, may plagiarized items sa inyong mga materials, eh, malaking problema yan. No? That's a very big legal and administrative uh, issue. So just to be sure that nothing is plagiarized, same thing with our students when we ask them to do some uh, papers, no? research papers, and then uh, reports, uh, they can use it uh, before submitting their papers. Just to make sure lang na... No? okay yung output and online checkers no if you don't have uh, if you don't have uh, subscription to grammarly you can also try naman other other online checkers like uh, plug tracker so how do you spell plug tracker p l a g t r a c k e r so plug uh, tracker so these are the things that you can use to to integrate technology into your assessment um, activities. Siguro we can try to, <clears throat> I'm checking the time. Um, we can try to answer this. Sige. Um, I will not ask you anymore to do it and then present again. Let's just try to do it as a group. Okay. Let's start and then you check your work whether it's correct or not. Um, so we have here the learning outcomes sa column A. And then sa column B, um, you will be giving, no? you will give, be giving the appropriate assessment for that particular learning outcome just to ensure the validity of your assessment. So let's try to do this one. First, identify the different statistical tools in processing quantitative data. Sige, what's the activity, the assessment activity that you will be uh, using for that one? Okay ba na ano magsalita rin yung participants siguro they can speak then. If you can speak siguro you can ano ba? Okay so for the first item uh, since the keyword there is identify eh di syempre yung assessment activity mo is pwedeng quiz di ba identification type ng inyong uh, quiz 
Uh, second is explain the impact of globalization on the Philippine economy. Or oh, the keyword there is explain. So what assessment activity will you give to your students? Number one, you can use uh, essay, diba? And then they will, you can give a question and then they will write an essay. Pwede rin naman yung simple na recitation, diba? You will ask them this question and then they will respond to the to the question. Yun lang, kapag ano siya, kapag, um, kapag uh, recitation siya, parang isang bagsakan na question lang to no hindi makakasag hindi mabibigyan ng opportunity yung iba so unlike essay all of them simultaneously will answer the question and then you just ask them to present their individual answers so or after writing an individual answer they can group again and then consolidate their their uh, answers <clears throat> Next, calculate the standard deviation of data sets. Calculate. De, syempre, you will ask your students to, pwede may mga problem-solving activities. Tapos yun, magsasagot yung inyong uh, studyante. Dito, pwede MCQ. Pwede rin namang yung hindi MCQ, open-ended. So, it's up to you which one you uh, want to, uh, which one which one you would like to um, explore. Differentiate biodegradable from uh, non-biodegradable. <clears throat> okay. Um, if, uh, pwede, pwede, ano, pwede tong, ano, pwede tong, um, essay then. You can ask your students to make an essay or siguro you can ask them to group themselves and then uh, into three members, and then they will come up with a Venn diagram, or they will try to creatively, they will try to creatively present the difference between biodegradable and non-biodegradable. -bio uh, yung iba pwedeng via song, via illustration, kasi to address din naman yung multiple intelligences of the students. But that's just one of the many options that you can you can uh, do. Next is critique a newspaper article. Of course, what you can do there is uh, you can ask your students to write a critique paper or a review paper or ano nga ba yung very popular term na ginagamit siyan? Uh, reaction paper. Yun. Yun ang kalimitan ginagamit eh, sa basic ed eh. Uh, so you can ask your students to do those activities para lang ma-ensure tong uh, LO na to. And then the last one is compose an effective persuasive essay. Definitely you'll ask your students to uh, write an essay. So again, what 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 am I emphasizing here? When you create an assessment activity, look at the verb. Okay? You have to look at the verb of your learning outcomes and you have to make sure that the assessment activity that you will give to your students really 100% matches the verb that was used in the learning outcome. Again, as much as possible to ensure reliability also and to check reliability, you give at least two activities uh, for each uh, learning outcome. To give them the students naman uh, ample options no? or selections of assessment uh, activities. Okay? Siguro I may not uh, ask you to do this uh, activity three anymore. It's almost similar to the first one, to the first one that uh, I asked you to do. Nilagyan lang natin ng grasp no? sa performance test. So let me explain to you what grasps is <clears throat> kasi it's an acronym. Remember, I told you that assessment is an umbrella. Under that is the task and exercises. So itong grasp, applicable lang yan dun sa task. Okay? Yung mga real-life activities. Why? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng G? G is goal. What's the goal of the activity? R is the role of the students in that activity. A is the audience of the activity. 
S is the um, situation. No? Ano yung konteksto ng activity? P is the performance or the product. Ano yung pinaka-output? And then S is the standards or the rubric or yung assess pa kung paano mo isuscore or evaluate yung performance. Uh, let me give you a specific example. Um, halimbawa, barangay uh, barangay 240 is uh, soliciting blood donations from barangay 201 is soliciting blood donations from the uh, from the youth. Now, you are tasked to uh, deliver and uh, to, to prepare an advocacy campaign that will uh, convince the youth to donate uh, blood to barangay. Okay? Uh, you will be assessed, your output will be assessed based on the following criteria. Content, uh, format, and uh, ano pa ba? content, format, and uh, uh, accuracy. Yan. So ano yung goal doon? The goal doon of yung sa activity na nilagay nyo doon sa description of the task is uh, to convince the youth. Diba? Ano ang role? Probably your role is you are a, barang uh, a youth leader in that barangay. Who are your audience? Your audience are the youth in your barangay. What is the situation? Of course, the context and the situation is that it's happening in barangay uh, context. Now, what's your product or performance? Um, your uh, product is an advocacy campaign no? that will convince uh, the youth. And then what is your S? That's the standards. Uh, the performance will be, be graded based on content, accuracy and layout. So, pag po gumawa kayo ng task, no? Hindi pwedeng sabihin niyo lang na okay, please come up with an advocacy camp advocacy campaign. Tas tapos na. No, hindi pwede 'yon. Should not be done like that. It has to be very clear for the students, no? Kaya um, kailangan kailangan talaga you really have to clearly and uh, comprehensively stipulate itong grasps when you develop the tasks for your uh, students. So again, grasp, G is goal, R is role, A is audience, S is situation, P is product or performance, and then S is uh, standards. Okay. Um, uh, o, by the way, OBE is different from OBT, Ella. Yung OBE, ito yung kay, pangalan nito? 1994, kalimutan ko. Sino yung ano nito? Um, sa OBTL, let me recall na lang later. Yung sa OBTL, kay Briggs naman to. Pag sinabing, oh, ito, it's, it's an offshoot of OBE. No? It's an offshoot of OBE. Kasi yung OBE is not really, not developed for teaching purposes. Hindi siya doon talaga ginawa. Okay? Hindi yan doon ginawa. So, eh, si Briggs, noong 1996, came coined a term. Ayun, si Spady, thank you. Uh, doon kay uh, Orly. No? Si Spady, noong 1994, um, yung sa OBE. Tapos yung kay Briggs naman, yung OBTL. So, OBTL, yan ang term na ginagamit kapag nasa teaching na. Okay? Nasa teaching and learning context. Kapag wala sa teaching and learning o kaya yung generic, no? OBE yung term dyan. So let me show you a diagram. Um, I personally developed this diagram, no? which you may want to adopt also. So if you will notice, <clears throat> at the center are the learning outcomes. At yun naman talaga. No? Uh, learning outcomes are the, the, the core of OBTL or OBE framework. Now, nakapalibot sa kanya, ia-align mo yung content, ia-align mo yung teaching and learning activities, and ia-align mo din yung assessment. So, lahat yun nakapunta dun sa CLO. But all of these things no, should be done in the context of 21st century learning. So, of course, when you consider 21st century learning, 
um, you have to consider the themes which, which I have explained a while back. May global, may health, may financial, uh, global, health, financial, um, ito ba iba? Uh, and then two more. And then uh, 21st century learning skills, we have the four C's or the seven C's. Okay, so you just have to contextualize your, uh, your, your, the execution of your OBE, OBTL in 21st century learning context. Kasi pag hindi nyo yan kinontextualize sa 21st century learning context, it might not match the learning style and the learning needs of your uh, 21st century learners. So when we develop the course materials, no, we will we will we will move within this uh, within this OBTL framework. Okay? Um at syempre, yung inyong gagawin na course materials naman, it will come from your syllabus. So of course, we expect that your syllabus is is uh OBDized na rin. Okay? Um, these are some of the components that uh, you have to include in your uh, syllabus. It uh, crucial jan yung graduate attributes and the institutional learning outcomes. Dapat nasa lahat ng syllabus yan. Uh, kasi ia-align jan naman yung mga program learning outcomes. Pag in the context of GE, dahil wala naman silang specific uh, program, pwede nyo namang gamitin yung term na GE learning outcomes. No? Yung mga GE syllabus. Tapos, present din dapat yung course learning outcomes. Yan naman yung, what's the focus of your, what's the focus of your uh, subject? And then you have the course content, course requirements, grading system, classroom policies, resources. Medyo you try to ano then you try to integrate a lot of technology no um yung current syllabus natin ay it may not really match the context now lalo na pag flexible learning so you have to adjust it a bit na kung ano lang yung mga may mga activities kasi da baka mahirap gawin ng flexible learning eh so nang hindi face to face so you may want to change those activities and make them more uh, flexible. Second, as much as possible, when you when you create your syllabus, you focus on the essential topics. Hindi pa pwede na ibobombard nyo ng napakaraming topics or content yung syllabus. Kasi ang mangyayari, it's quantity over quality. In every type, in any type of learning context, it should always be the other way around. It has to be it has to be um quality over quantity that's why it's very crucial that you only choose the essential topics yung mga peripheral topics yung mga nice to know topics i-embed niyo na lang yon dun sa uh, essential topics okay tapos pag ganun pa ang ginawa niyo mas magiging integrative ang view ng estudyante doon sa sa ginawa yung course materials at saka doon sa mga topics na ipaprocess nyo doon sa klase. Eh, pag sobrang daming yan, hindi na, hindi na makonect ng mga estudyante yung mga topics. So in isolation, no yung kanilang tingin doon sa mga topics na uh, nandun sa syllabus and nandun sa course materials. So again, you have to visit re revisit first the syllabus that you have uh, before really coming up with your course materials because they have to match. No? They have to match. At kailangan syllabus pa lang, medyo okay na. Okay na yung pagkakagawa. Lalo na yung mga course learning outcomes and the, and the topic learning outcomes. Okay. So let me show you. Ito yung example. No? Although I will expound on this uh, tomorrow. Pero bigyan ko lang kayo ng idea. So dun sa syllabus ninyo, of course, you have the week number. And then you have the CLOs, yung course learning outcomes, target ng inyong uh, syllabus. And then you have the individual topics. And then yung, you have the topic learning outcomes. Yung topic learning outcomes, ito nagmamatch dun sa mga topics na, na inilagay ninyo. No? So again, we try, let's try to distinguish yung CLOs at TLOs. Yung CLOs, syllabus level. 
yung TLO, that's the lesson level, okay, na mga learning outcomes. And then, if you will notice sa assessment activities, pagkarami-rami, di ba, you will see this. Although ang topic ko, iilan lang, one, two, three. I only have three topics, but I have so many assessment activities. And I distinguish that into three. Enabling activities, <clears throat> we have the main task or main activity, and then reinforcement activity. Ano yung main activity? I will start with that one or the main task. Ito yung talagang tinatarget ng inyong main topic. Ang topic ko, persuasive speech. Therefore, my main task is for them to deliver a persuasive speech. That's my main task. Enabling tasks are the little activities that will help the students to perform better during the main task. So, may mini-debate muna, may mga quizzes, may audience analysis, speech drafting, small group speech, speech analysis, self-viewing reflection. Gagawin muna lahat yan ng mga estudyante bago sila mag-proceed sa main task. Scaffolding ang purpose ng enabling activities. So, kailangan talaga systematic din ang pagkaka-craft pagkaka ng mga enabling activities. Huwag kayong maglalagay dyan ng mga activities na ano. Wala namang kinalaman sa main task. Okay. Pag, pag gano'n ang ginawa nyo, hindi siya enabling. Okay? And then reinforcement task is this is uh, an, uh, an additional activity aside from the main task. So in this case, after delivering their speech, eh, papagawain ko pa sila ng advocacy, ano, advocacy video. Kasi yung topic naman nila ng uh, persuasive speech is about a social issue and then i'll ask uh, i'll ask them to ano uh, to post their advocacy uh, video via youtube or via uh, via facebook probably now yung methodology yung assessment activity assessment column that's from the perspective of the student yan ang mga gagawin ng mga estudyante methodology part yan naman yung mga gagawin ng teacher so si teacher magkakaroon ng class discussion, magpapa-film viewing siya, magle-lecture siya at magde-demo din siya ng isang speech. Siya mismo pwedeng mag-deliver ng isang persuasive speech, no? So methodology part is the 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 section that relates to teacher activities. And then of course the last part you have the resources there resources there. Ano mga kailangan ni teacher? Ano mga kailangan ni student to execute this particular topic? So you have to uh, list them down also under resources. Okay? So to summarize, no, we're at the end part of this uh, first lecture. To summarize, the core of OBE or OBTL, again, is on the learning outcomes. No, yun talaga yung puso niya. So, kailangan malinaw ang learning outcomes. It's accurate also. And it's clear. And along with it, we have to observe constructive alignment. And what you mean by constructive alignment is that your learning outcomes, your teaching and learning activities, your assessment, and your content are, are aligned no, with each other along with the performance tasks. Also, to ensure valid and reliable assessment, you have to make sure that it directly hits your learning outcomes. And as much as possible, for each learning outcome, you have to provide at least two activities. Okay? And then the last part is, uh, the last note is, it's either because uh, technology is unavoidable now, no? So if we will not adapt to technology, we will really be obsolete uh, as uh, teachers. So with that, uh, thank you very much. And um, we can all probably open now the floor for questions. So there you go. Thank you very much, Dr. Jesse Barot, for a very um, interactive and informative presentation about mm. student-centered OBE model for module designs. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So this, yeah. Uh, this very moment, we now open our questions from our participants. Again, we remind everyone that firstly, we will take questions from participants joining us here via Zoom. Thereafter, questions from Facebook Live will be entertained, and we hope that our time permits 
for us to accommodate more <clears throat> questions. So uh, those in Zoom, just click the hand raise button or you can open your video for, for us to see you to be recognized or you can simply type your questions in the chat room. Um, we also, uh, we already have a question, Sir Jesse from, mm -hmm. um, okay, a moment please. <clears throat> A question, a question from Sir Jeffrey Lloyd Kagande from Visaya State University. Um, considering the, the expanded learning opportunities as one of the principles in OBE, teachers provide more reinforcement activities to students enrolled in the course. We also consider the capacity of the students to take in or perform these activities. Is there a formula for the number of courses <laughs> students can take at the same time? At the same time, for the teachers, is there a standard as how as to how many courses one teacher can handle to ensure the delivery of quality instruction? Um, so, so the, the question relates to the number of subjects that the teacher will handle. A first is teacher, that a question? Yes, firstly, is there a formula for the number of courses students can take at the same time? And ah, secondly, okay. yeah. for teachers, is there a standard as to how many courses one teacher can handle to ensure the delivery of quality instruction? Uh -huh. um, for, for, from the perspective of the student, there, there's no really formula on, on how many subjects that the students can take because there are so many factors that you have to consider. Number one is, of course, the capacity of the student. Number two, you have to consider also the difficulty level of the subjects, no? the complexity of the subjects. So, um, of course, the context of the, the learning context also. So, there is no specific formula on the number of on the number of uh, subjects that the students should handle. But uh, one thing is for sure: the fewer, the better. Uh, because uh, if it's fewer, then the absorption rate and the assimilation of knowledge is is higher. If there are so many so many subjects that the students are taking, especially if because there's also a science in the curriculum, no? Hindi pwedeng bato ka lang ng bato. Eto topic na to dito sa first sem, tapos ito second sem, tapos ito naman first sem. May science din don sa paggrupo ng mga subjects per SEM. So, kailangan tinitingnan din yon para kahit kung marami yung mga subjects na i-offer, hindi rin disintegrated. No? Um, halimbawa, limang subjects, uh, kaya ng student na pagdikit-dikitin yung limang subjects para uh, para para mas integrative. No? Integrative. The key word here is integrative learning hindi dapat in isolation yon so there are so many factors that you have to consider uh, regarding the maximum number of subjects that the students can handle but the basic principle is the fewer the better and the more related the subjects are the better in one term and for the teachers naman um, if we will base it on international standard um, typically yung sa isa sa abroad kasi at uh, limitan 12 hours lang talaga ang ano nila yung teaching no teaching in a week is uh, 12 hours meron pa diyan pag halimbawang depende sa rank no if you are a university professor uh, like in universities in Hong Kong uh, mga 6 hours lang ang teaching and the rest will be devoted to uh, will be devoted to uh, research but for the purpose of delivering flexible learning for students, um, I think naman yung currently na sa... Wag lang lalampas siguro sa ano. May mga universities na 24 is too many actually. Yung 24 units, no? that's too many. 18, nasa threshold yun. Uh, 18 below, maganda. That, that would be a good number. But the fewer, of course, the better. Okay, so thank you very much, sir. Um, there is another question from VSU's uh, Sir Geraldo Fernandez. How much is the ideal student class size for flexible learning? 
um, if it's pag class, pag of course pag face to face, pag may face to face na, the ideal is no more than 35 in a room, no? Pag yan ay face to face. Sa online naman, um, it depends on the ability of the ability of the teacher to handle large classes, but you can have as many as 40 students in one class if it's an online class. Uh, and it also depends on the platform that you are using. May mga platforms na may mga limitations. But hopefully, it should not be more than uh, 40 students. Uh, that, would be, that would be an ideal one. Okay, thank you, sir. So we have another question from um, EVSU, Pearl Karnis, ma'am. Uh, is it okay to give more weeks time for a certain course outcome? There are cases that few lessons or units will go under one course outcome. Yeah, that's that's happening. No? Um, may mga topic na talagang bumunuin mo or may mga learning outcome, bunuin mo siya ng several weeks. At may mga learning outcomes naman na uh, one week lang. May mga learning outcomes naman na uh, disperse siya talaga from start to end. So again, it really depends on the nature of the learning outcomes that you have. At hindi yan yung fix na itong learning outcome one, ito number of weeks. No, you cannot do that. It, you have to look into the nature of the learning outcome no, and how it is placed in your uh, syllabus and that will dictate the number of sessions that you will devote to that particular learning outcome or topic. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, do we have more questions coming from this group? You can please um, just click the hand raise button or you can open your video to be recognized. So I guess we don't have further questions from the Zoom. Uh, we have questions from our Facebook Live, sir. Mm -hmm. um, oh, naka Facebook Live pala? Yes, sir. Wow. We are also live <laughs> via Facebook. Oh. Okay. Um, it is from Iski Zali. Um, on the idea of activities versus task versus exercise, <clears throat> mm -hmm. please reiterate contrasting exercise from task, this being real life based, right? Since seemingly exercises were like written tests based on your examples earlier. Could you please exemplify more since I thought these three are vital in writing the module? I did. Uh, meaning I expound on the exercises. Malinaw um, naman sa kanya yung task and activities. Ano? Yes, sir. I think it was more on uh, the contrasting uh, example you gave earlier. Uh, the exercises. Okay. So... Uh, kanina, I gave a lot of examples for tasks like bank transactions, yung studyante ay magkakaroon ng teaching demo, oh, that one is uh, that one is a task. No? Tapos yung, yung exercise, eto na lang, just to distinguish. Pag exercise, may, may one correct answer. Kapag task, walang one correct answer. Okay, so if you will have MCQ, Diba may one correct answer, exercise. Pag halimbawa, identification, one correct answer, exercise. If you will write an essay, does it have any one right correct answer? None, so it's a task. If you have like true or false, it has one correct answer, so that is exercise. So that can easily distinguish it probably. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Um, another question from our Facebook Live from... Stephen Johnson, is it still advisable to conduct quizzes as a summative assessment, knowing that students will screenshot and share their answers to their classmates as a way of cheating their tests? If yes, what intervention should be made to avoid or lessen it? Um, on whether it is appropriate as a, as a summative assessment or not, it depends on the learning outcomes that you have. No? Pag, may mga pati, it depends on the nature of the subject. There are subjects that will really require you to have uh, like yung mga MCQ type, no? mga problem, alimbawa sa mathematics, no? puro nasa conceptual realm yun eh. 
Tapos kapag sumagot sila sa mga sa mga exercises, eh talaga namang paper and pencil 'yon, mga uh, selected response type yung kaninang na banggit ko. Uh, may, may mga subject naman na kailangan mga task, no? Like sa English, like uh, basta yung mga skill-based subjects, ano 'yan, mga tasks 'yan. Pero may mga conceptual subjects. So malamang andun nasa realm of concepts lang 'yan, mahirap i-execute sa task. So ang summative mo niyan, mga final exam would be yung mga multiple choice type. Now, on the question regarding the security, no? Of the para to avoid then the the cheating, the the students if it's uh, real time or uh, synchronous, pwede naman silang sabay-sabay na sumagot. May specific time lang magse-send ang um, halimbawa si teacher ng link sa kanilang mga estudyante tapos may time limit 'yon oras na clinic nila yung clinic nila yung um, yung link na 'yon pag sumagot na sila doon time 'yon no halimbawa 30 seconds to 1 minute per item depende yan sa difficulty level ng item tapos magmo na agad sila sa next item so real time uh, uh, real time um Walang panahon si estudyante to talk to his classmate or to ask for uh, questions. Kung sabay-sabay yun, no Kaya lang, kailangan din uh, may data bank yung teachers. Kasi pag iba-ibang oras naman yung kanilang, uh, kanilang pag-click doon sa link, pag iisang set lang yung ginamit mo, may leak talagang mangyayari. But if you have a data bank of items, no? Uh, na ang, ang computer, ang system will automatically select and randomly arrange the items in the test. Then this will this the cheating will be mitigated definitely. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have another from Zoom from NWSSU, uh, Mam Lucil. Our practice in making TOS is we base the number of items. On the time consumed per topic, please elaborate why we need to change this practice. Because it's not valid. Um, it has to be based on learning outcomes. Because at the end of the day, all the activities inside the classroom uh, moves within the learning outcomes and not on the time allotted to them. Ano na lang yun para indirect na lang na effect yung time kasi minsan pag complicated yung learning outcome mo mas malaking time ang ide devote after effect na lang yung time but essentially it's really the learning outcomes that will should guide you in uh, preparing the table of specifications. Thank you sir and we have one more from our Facebook live from Mamrina Villarosa Pedrosa, what is the ideal number of learning outcomes in one course or subject? Ang sinasabi ng ibang expert is it should not go beyond eight or should not go beyond six. But again, it depends on the subject, no? But I think it to make it very manageable, yung mga six siguro would be okay. Just to make it more manageable. But again, it really depends because. You have to align it to the institutional learning outcomes, and you have to align it to the program learning outcomes. Hindi pwedeng may may magmismatch jan. So titingnan mo din yon. Pwedeng lumampas ka sa six, kasi you have to address some of the PLOs in the yung sa CMO, ni ba? At sa kayong nandun sa institutional learning outcome. So there's no fix, but some people are saying, some experts are saying that six would be okay. That would be reasonable. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Sir Jesse. Uh, I think there are no more questions uh, here in our mm -hmm. Zoom room and also from our Facebook Live. I think that ends our, our question and answer time as regards to your presentation this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to all of you. It's really a pleasure to, to talk to a group of educators from Region 8 again. And of course, sir, we are also very glad that you have joined us uh, here this afternoon and sharing more of the information yeah. that we need for our uh, writing. Uh -oh. Tomorrow, mas focus yun kasi ano na yun, course materials. Yun na talaga yung application of the things that we talked about now.
Of course, sir, we will be expecting yeah. more uh, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> yes. So again, thank you very much, Dr. Jesse Barrett. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, Can so... I, uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Ba? Or what? Pwede na ba? Um, ah, okay. okay, yes. Or yes, na? Okay na? Okay, okay sige. Thank you so much. Okay, so for our participants, uh, 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 Sir Early, we would like to request that we flash on the screen the link for our attendance this afternoon. Is it visible already, sir? Um, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, the, the link for the attendance, sir. Uh, let me proceed to the next slide, sir. Okay, okay. this is it, sir. Okay, so uh, for, our particip for our participants, we have on the screen the link for our attendance for this afternoon. So please uh, make sure that we do our attendance for this afternoon to be recorded, of course. And for some reminders, we would like to inform everyone that tomorrow, June 12th, uh, Independence Day morning session will be hosted by the University of Eastern Philippines. The session starts at nine o'clock in the morning. And for the afternoon session, it will be hosted by Visaya State University. And session starts at one o'clock in the afternoon. So all of you, thank you very much for joining us here today or this afternoon. And again, may God bless us all. Thank you, everyone, and God bless Paul. Thank you.